Thank you, everyone. So good evening, good evening, Kuya Edgar, Ari Osman. Hello, Alet. At um, I'm happy. I am so blessed to be here tonight. So I pray that everyone is doing well um, right now, and uh, I am excited to share the word. So, um, so yeah. Um, yeah. Before I start, you know, I just want to say this is a really uh, interesting topic. Okay. And and uh, when Kuya Edgar reached out to me about this, he said that he had a leading um, to have a fellowship on this subject. And as you guys know, the title natin tonight is Help My Unbelief. And I love this topic. You know, I love this topic. I love teaching on this. And uh, I, I pray that everyone will receive this truth tonight. So um, let me just open this up in prayer before we start. Let's pray. Lord God, Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for everyone who is watching. We just lift up to you this whole uh, fellowship, Lord. We thank you for this, um, this, this platform that we have, Lord, that even though we are physically far apart, even though we have brothers and sisters from different countries, different time zones, and different areas, Lord, we are united in one heart and one spirit. We lift up to you every heart right now, Father, every person here, every family represented by everyone here. I pray that the seed of your word will take root in their hearts, that they will receive this with gladness, Lord, and allow it to just grow in their hearts and bear fruit in their lives. I pray, Lord, that um, this will speak volumes to them, that your Holy Spirit would, would just really quicken this to their hearts, Father. They would receive this wholeheartedly. And um, so, Father, we just lift up this time to you. We declare that no distraction from the enemy will have any effect. We declare that that, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. This time belongs to you. It is fellowship between us and the Lord. And we just unite today in one heart and one spirit. We lift this all up to you. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. So, yeah. So, welcome again, brothers and sisters. Thanks for having me here. It's me, Brother Ron from Metanoia Christian Ministries. And it is a privilege to share the word with you all. So, you know, this, this, um, our title for tonight is help my unbelief and um it's a really popular um it is a really popular phrase that you find from the book of mark you see this in mark 9 24 right so you know just to start off i am going to read through this uh this passage it's 12 verses mark 9 uh verses 17 to 29 i think um g has the verses up right okay so I'm going to read through this once and I'll just go bit by bit. All right. And uh, if you guys have questions along the way, just write them down. We'll have question and answer after this. So let's start Mark 9 verse 17. I'm reading from the New King James Version today. Uh, 17, it says, that then one of the crowd answered and said, teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit. And wherever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid so i spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out but they could not he answered him and said oh faithless generation how long shall i be with you how long shall i bear with you bring him to me then they brought him to him and when he saw him immediately the spirit convulsed him and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming at the mouth so he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Verse 23, Jesus said to him, if you can believe all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to a deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Verse 26, and the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly and came out of him, and he became as one dead. So that many said he is dead. Verse 27. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? So he said to them, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer 
and fasting. All right. Hallelujah. So, um, guys, I have thought on this many, many times, and there are so many ways to share about this. Like, kung pabayaan nyo lang ako dito, ilang oras ako magdadaktak dito. Because <laughs> there's so much in this passage, you know. Um, there's so much to talk about in with regards to deliverance, with regards to dealing with evil spirits and even sicknesses. There, there are so many insights here that you see that sicknesses are usually accompanied by demons, you know, stuff like being deaf and being mute. And um, we have experienced this in the ministry. We have cast out uh, mute and deaf spirits and the people did receive their hearing. The people's tongues were loosed uh, in the name of Jesus. So, you know, we've witnessed this, we've practiced this, we've seen all this stuff. And um, I think it was just last week, I was talking about the same passage, but in the account of Luke. But I do want to focus on verse 24. Because that is the title of the message tonight. So it says here that immediately the father, the child, cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Because the verse before that, Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. You know, so I think, guys, you know, regardless of how long you've been a Christian, regardless of how, how long you've been in the faith, you know, we, we understand that there is value in faith, that we need faith. Faith in Jesus Christ is what, <laughs> what we are saved by grace through faith. So without faith, nothing happens. You know, without faith, we are stuck in our sinful state. We are Without faith, we are not born again. You know, without faith, it is impossible for us to please God. So um, it is faith that pleases God. And then Jesus just, just, just gives us a really powerful statement here saying that anything is possible to those who believe. Anything. And when he says anything, he means anything. Okay? When Jesus said all things, he means all things. If he says possible, it means possible. So Jesus doesn't have to, you know, um, Jesus does not exaggerate. He is the truth. Every word that comes out of his mouth is true. Uh, and he again, he is the truth. John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the word. And whatever he says is the word of God. Right? So uh, absolutely, when he said this, he meant it. That all things are possible to him who believes. All things. And, and, and um, he, he is displaying here the power of faith. And again, the whole context of this is a father, a father who is who is who is heartbroken because of his son who is de deaf and mute and demonized. That the demons, the demons within the boy, try to destroy him, throw him into the fire, throw him into the water, convulses him, you know, harming him, doing this and that. And you see Jesus just just exercise his power over this whole situation and set the boy free from uh, demonic oppression. In bondage, right? But look at the father's response. Look at the father's response. Lord, I believe. I believe. But help my unbelief. So, I mean, I believe that this father indeed had faith somewhat. Why? Because he, he knew to go to Jesus. He knew he had the faith to come to Jesus. He had the faith to come to the, to, to, to the disciples and ask them to pray over. You know, he had the faith to seek out uh, ministry. He had the faith to come to the Lord and he had the faith to call him Lord. He called Jesus Lord. Lord, I believe I came here. I brought my son. It's not easy to transport my son. There's a spirit that convulses him. There's a spirit that throws him into the fire. And it's not easy to get. It's not like they didn't have any cars. They didn't have any uh, wheelchairs or anything like that. It was really hard to travel with a disabled uh, child, especially a demonized one who gets thrown around and convulses every so often. So, you know, so he had faith. He had faith enough to seek out Jesus. But Jesus wasn't there because prior to this, Jesus came from the mountain as the transfiguration. So um, anyway, so Jesus was not there yet. But when he got there, he came to Jesus. He had enough faith to come to the disciples, then come to Jesus. He said, Lord, your disciples could not cast this out. Your disciples could not help us. Right? And then, and, and then despite all that, like, so he knew to come to Jesus. He heard about the miracles of Jesus. He heard 
about Jesus being the Messiah and that Jesus is the answer to this problem. He had faith. Yet he confessed in verse 24 that, Lord, I believe, yet help my unbelief. So, you know what, guys? I want to point, I want to point out, it is possible to be an unbelieving believer. It is possible. It is really possible to be an unbelieving believer. You know, and and um, you know, I, I don't want to, I'm not, I'm not here to argue like doctrines right now. I'm not here. Uh, that's not my job. I'm here to show truth and 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 um, and just pour, uh, reveal the heart of the Lord through His Scriptures. You know, I like digging deep and looking and finding the root of the problem. Okay, there are so many unbelieving believers today. What do I mean? What is an unbelieving believer? An unbelieving believer is someone who who believes in Jesus as Lord but does not believe that he can do anything else. There are believers who believe that Jesus is, is God, but are not willing to believe him to do anything for them, or, 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 or that they, they doubt that he is really good, or they doubt that he really cares. So they're like, yeah, okay, I, I believe Jesus is God, I'm a Christian, or I grew up in church, yeah, I know Jesus is God, I believe, I believe in that. But like, do you believe that Jesus loves you? Do you believe that Jesus cares about you? Like you today, do you know that your problem today, Jesus knows about and Jesus cares about and God has actually prepared something for you. So there are a lot of people that do believe in Jesus as God, but they don't believe that he can do anything for you. You know, or, or he's just some someone, you, yeah, okay, I'll do it. Uh, I, I need to believe in him to enter heaven and that's it. There are so many unbelieving believers. And, you know, again, I like digging down to the roots and, and finding out why don't you believe or why don't you fully believe? Why do you have selective belief? What is the reason? Is it because you have been indoctrinated? Is it because you grew up with a certain mindset? Yung nakasanayan ba? Naging kultura na lang? Yung kaalaman mo tungkol sa Bible or tungkol sa word? Or, or maybe... Um, you, uh, as you were indoctrinated, you were raised in a certain environment. You were taught to believe that God is like this, God does this, God does that. Pero wala naman biblical basis. Kumbaga hearsay lang. You know, there, there's always a root. Is there? Is it? Is it because you had a bad experience, and uh, the experience did not make sense? Therefore, you concluded na si God is like this, God is like that. You know. Uh, I mean, I, I'm not I'm not here to talk about healing tonight, but um, I do have to point that out because there's a lot like one of the biggest issues um, when discussing belief. And of course, in the context of this passage in Mark nine, this talks about healing and deliverance. This talks about supernatural. This is, this is a miracle. What Jesus did when Jesus cast out a demon, who can cast out a demon? Only Jesus can do that. Only the power of God can do that. You know, so in the context of this passage in Mark 9, you were talking about Jesus as a miracle worker, Jesus as the one who heals, Jesus is the one who opens deaf ears and, and looses uh, the tongue, and, and, and Jesus is the one who, who, who just uh, sets the captives free. You know, so in this context, you know, today, do we believe that Jesus can do the same things? Do we believe that Jesus cares about your problem? Do we believe that if there's someone sick in your family, do we believe that Jesus is our healer? That Hebrews 13, 8 says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if he did this during the time of the Gospels, he's doing this today, and he will continue to do so until he comes again. So, you know, a lot of people will say, yeah, okay, I believe in miracles, but maybe not for me because I don't see them. I think in the Bible it happened, but here. So you know what I mean? See, that, that is an unbelieving believer. That there are so many Christians who believe in Jesus as Lord, but not as their healer. That they believe Jesus saved them from their sins, but they don't think Jesus can do anything about their situation right now. So, sino solo nila? Binabalikat nila. Kina, ano, ginagamit nila yung sariling strength. So, I don't, I don't, 
understand uh, why, you know, we if we believe in the Bible that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, why would Jesus stop doing these things? Why would Jesus stop caring? Why would Jesus stop doing miracles? You know, because he doesn't. He still cares. He still loves us. He is with us always, even till the end of the age, Matthew 28, 20. So, you know, there are a lot of reasons why believers don't believe. There are a lot of reasons why a lot of uh, believers have unbelief in their heart. You know, so again, sometimes it's because we've been indoctrinated. Maybe we were raised in a certain religious uh, mindset or culture, or maybe you had a bad experience and the only way you could make sense was you blame God for it. Maybe, you know, I don't know, baka may na-accidente, baka may namatay na magulang o anak. Tapos yung reasoning na lang ng utak eh, si God to eh, si God kumuha, si God ganyan. And, you know, a lot of people do these things and because of that, because of having an opinion about God that is not aligned with the Bible, nagkakaroon ng unbelief. Nagkakaroon ng unbelief yung puso ng tao. So they believe in Jesus as Lord, but not as anything else. They believe that Jesus forgave them of their sins, but it ends there. So you can be an unbelieving believer. And unbelieving believers do not experience the kingdom of God. They get stuck. They are, they are um, stuck in a defeated uh, lifestyle where Jesus, through his word, tells us that we're supposed to be more than conquerors in him, right? Romans 8.37. Pero guys, pag naniniwala ka kay Jesus, hindi ka dapat talunan. Yun ang pinupunta ko dito. Yun ang gusto kong tumbukin. If you have Jesus in your heart, hindi ka dapat talunan. Hindi ka dapat talunan, hindi ka dapat bugbog, hindi ka dapat pinaglalaroan ng kalaban. You are supposed to be more than a conqueror in Him. Dapat tayo yung nagwawagi, dapat tayo panalo. Dapat yung, yung, yung mundo, hindi tayo uh, hindi tayo hindi, hindi tayo talo sa mundo na to. You know, kasi greater is He who is in us than He who is in the world. 1 John 4.4 4. So, um, you know, there are so many, so many, so many reasons why believers have unbelief. And and um, the problem at the root of it is always lack of knowledge. You know, there's a verse in Hosea 4, verse 6. Well, lots of notes, but I'm just, I'm just sharing. That says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Okay, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Ano yung lack of knowledge? Yung sa Tagalog, pwede mong sabihin dito yung nakakamatay yung akala. Na... <laughs> Hindi ko alam kung alam niyo yung kasabihan na yun. Pero nakakamatay yung akala. Yung problema dito, ang dami natin akala. Akala ko ganito. Akala ko si God ganyan. Akala ko si God ganyan. But how can you have a knowledge of God apart from His Word? You know, I've had people try to argue with me. Nande, si God ganito, si God ganyan. I'm like, what is your verse to support your statement? Anong Bible verse ang gamit mo para patunayan na totoo nga yung sinasabi mo? Sabi nila, hindi, wala. Kasi ako, nangyari sa akin, sabi ko, bro, sorry, I I don't want to hear it because it's not part of the Word of God. Walang kwenta makipag-diskusyon kung hindi natin pag-uusapan ang Word of God. You want to learn about God? You go to His Word. If it's not in His Word, I'm not going to take it as truth because it is the Word of God that is true. Di ba? So, paano natin may kilala ang Panginoon kung hindi natin alam ang Kanyang salita? Paano natin may kilala ang Panginoon kung hindi tayo magbigay ng oras at mamuhunan sa ating relasyon sa Kanya? Paano tayo may ikipag-ugnayan sa Kanya? How can we have a relationship with someone we don't spend time with? How can we have uh, a, a, an intimate relationship with someone who we don't even know? You can't. You cannot. You know, how can you... Ito kasi yung proses, may, may, may proses yun. Okay? How can you have faith in someone who you don't trust? You can. How can you trust someone who you don't know? You can. How can you know someone if you don't spend time with them? So what? Diba? So ito yung problema kung bakit meron tayong unbelieving believers. Na ang daming, ang dami sa atin na gusto magka-faith kay God, pero in the back of your mind, nagdadalawang isip ka, tutulungan ba talaga ako nito? Totoo bang sumasagot ng prayer si God? Baka naman sa iba lang. Baka naman sa akin hindi kasi makasalanan ako eh. Kung ganun ka mag-isip, 
that's unbelief. Pinagdududahan mo yung kabutihan at pagmamahal ng Panginoon. So hindi ko sinasabing masama ka dahil doon. I'm not saying you're a bad person. I'm not saying that you're 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 bad or it makes you less of a Christian. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying though is that if you are thinking that way and you are doubting, you don't know God. You don't know God well enough to trust him. Kasi pinagdududahan natin yung kabutihan niya at kabaitan niya. Mahirap magtiwala kay God kung hindi ka sure kung kakampi mo ba siya o hindi. Mahirap yan pag yung may, may problema. Ito, madalas, guys, typical Christian mindset. May nangyaring masama sa'yo. Si God to, pinaparusahan ako. O, oh, di ba? Madalas yan ang sinasabi. Si God to, kasi may ginawa akong masama. Ito yung palu ko. Yan yung, yan yung turo eh. Pero if you would read scripture, hindi totoo yan. Sasabihin ba, nakagalit yung iba sa akin. Bakit ka ganyan magsalita? Ibig mo sabihin, di nagpaparusa si God. Ano? Judgment is reserved for the last day. Right now, that there are so many scriptures that I can show you that right now, pag may masamang nangyari sa'yo, hindi si God yun. God is a good God. Right now, we live in the age of grace. Right now, 2 Corinthians 5.19, He is not counting your sins against you. May, may oras at panahon tayo na magbago at lumapit sa Kanya at talikuran yung dating buhay natin. Hindi niya binibilang yung kasalanan natin. Hindi niya, um, hindi niya tayo hinuhusgaan. Because all judgment is reserved for the last day. John 12, 47, 48. Kita mo mga kapatid, madami tayong akala na akala natin totoo pero wala naman tayong biblical basis for saying so. Or hindi balanse yung alam natin tungkol kay God dahil hindi natin nabigyan ng oras yung salita ng Diyos. Or baka naman pinakinggan lang natin yung tinuturo sa atin na tayo mismo hindi natin pinuntahan yung salita ng Diyos. Mas delikado yun. Guys, uh, if you've heard me preach before, or if you've heard me, uh, eh, eh, like most of my messages, I will tell you, that I, almost every time I preach, I say this, huwag niyong paniwalaan yung sinasabi ko dahil lang sinabi ko. Kaya ako lagi nagbibigay ng Bible verse, kaya every few sentences, may ilalabas akong Bible verse, para kayo mismo yung pumunta doon sa salita ng Diyos. At kayo mismo makakita para sa sarili ninyo na totoo nga ito yung salita ng Diyos. So, huwag niyong paniwalaan dahil, dahil sinabi ni Brother Ron, dahil ganito ganyan, dahil sinabi ni, ni Brother Eric o ni Pastor Majo na hindi, o ni Kuya Edgar, hindi yun yung point. Yung point is, ang, ang katotohanan na perfecto nasa salita ng Diyos. Tayo ay mensahero lang. So, I will point you to the Word of God so that you see for yourself in the Word of God ano ba talaga nakasunod doon. Huwag tayong magtitiwala sa second-hand faith na porke sinabi ni pastor, sinabi ni ganito, uh, hindi kami si God. Okay? Tao lang din kami. Pero yung salita ng Diyos, that is the truth. So it is very important that you learn to value the Word of God. You learn for yourself to desire to spend time in the Word of God. You know? And, and para maiwasan natin tong uh, maging unbelieving believer. You know why, guys? Unbelief will will steal your miracle. Unbelief will steal uh, what God has given you through grace. Unbelief is a wall that will prevent you from experiencing the fullness of God's love. Unbelief will will just it's it'll it will negate the good the, the goodness that pours out from God sa buhay natin, hindi natin mararanasan ng buo yung pagmamahal ng Panginoon dahil sa unbelief na to. So, tutumbukin ko yung ugat ng unbelief. It's really wrong knowledge. It's wrong knowledge. It's wrong understanding. It's yung maling akala tungkol sa Panginoon na hindi naman pala nakabase sa salita. You know? So, you know, again, religion has taught us so many things you know, lahat naman tayo may kanya-kanyang religious background. I don't know kung ano mga history ninyo o kung saan kayo galing na, na church or denomination dati or ano. Pero uh, me personally, I can't speak for you. Ako lang. I speak for myself lang. Na when I grew up, yung religion na alam ko, ang dami kong akala na akala ko talaga yun yung katotohanan. Pero nung ako mismo nagbasa ng Bible, nakita ko, wala naman to sa Bible. Bakit ko pinaniniwalaan to? Saan ang galing yung ganyan-ganyan na turo? Saan yung galing nung ganito-ganyan? Bakit nakasulat sa Bible, bawal to, pero ginagawa namin sa church? 
bakit sinasabi sa iyo? Ang daming ganun na sarili kong tanong. And guys, it's not because somebody told me. It's not because may nang-away sa akin. Sinabi, mali yung ginagawa mo. That's not the way you win people. But when I saw for myself in the Word of God, kinausap ako ng Word of God. Doon ang bago buhay ko. Noong nakita ko at nakilala ko ang Diyos para sa aking sarili sa pamamagitan ng Word of God. Through the Bible itself, it came alive in my heart. And today, I can say, I know God's heart. I know God. I spend time with Him. I hear Him. I talk to Him all the time. He's alive. He talks. He speaks to you through His Word sometimes, through a voice in your heart, through the Holy Spirit, through, through, through brothers and sisters. There's so many ways that God can talk to you. But the thing is, yung mga ibang tao kasi nagdadasal, Lord, kausapin niyo ako. Actually, lagi nagsasalita si Lord. Ang problema, matigas lang yung puso natin. Or minsan, yung sinasabi niya sa atin, ayaw natin marinig. Kasi hindi yun yung sagot na gusto natin makita. So ito yung problema kapag di natin kilala si Lord. We become unbelieving believers. We become unbelieving believers. And like this guy, sa Mark 9 nga, sinasabi niya, Lord, I believe. Tinawag na nga kita, Lord, dinala ko na sa iyo, anak ko. Ano ba to? Pero nagdududa pa rin ako. May doubt pa rin siya. May doubt pa rin siya na kayang gawin ni Lord, itong kayang tapatan ni Lord, itong problema niya malaki. May doubt pa rin siya na yung Panginoon mas malaki kaysa sa problema niya. Di ba, may, sinasabi, may, 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 may kasabihan nga na, when people don't tell God about how big your problem is, tell your problem how big your God is. You, pero hindi yun yung nangyayari. Because how can you how can you tell your problem how big your God is kung tingin mo si God yung nagbigay ng problema? Pa, paano mo pagkakatiwalaan ng isang Diyos na tingin mo pinagtitripang ka lang kung kailan niya gusto? But that's not God. That is not God. That is not the heart of God. So, but when you truly understand His heart and His character and you experience His love and His goodness, you know, hindi mo hahati-hatiin yung paniniwala mo sa Kanya. Example ko kanina. Maraming Kristiyano, maraming born-again Christian naniniwala that their sins have been forgiven. So, amen. Yun naman yun, di ba? Na whoever believes in Him shall not perish but will have eternal, but has eternal life. So, it's because our sins are forgiven. First John 2, 2, Jesus has paid for the sins of the world. Diba? He's the propitiation for our sins. So, maraming Kristiyano, or I hope, I hope lahat naman ng Kristiyano na niniwala doon na pinatawad na tayo sa ating mga kasalanan. Pero ba't ayaw niyo maniwala na kaya ka rin pagalingin? Diba? Bakit may Kristiyano na niniwala kay God, pero ayaw maniwala na may demonyo? Saan napunta yung mga demonyo na pinag-uusapan sa Bible? Nag-uwian ba sila? Sige, tapos na kami dito. Nasulat na yung libro. Uwi muna kami. Ganun ba yan? Nasaan na yung mga demons yan? Where are they now? Demons don't die. Demons don't die. They're not like people. They are spirits. They're still here. What are we doing? A lot of people today are trying to fix their their problems they're trying to fix spiritual problems with physical solutions. Which is hindi gagana. You need a spiritual solution to fix a spiritual problem. Yung sa Mark 9 niya, deaf and dumb. Bingi at pipi yung bata tapos nagkukonvulsyon. Hindi magamot. Walang magawa. Ano? So they needed a spiritual solution for a spiritual problem. Guys, ang daming Kristiyano today hindi naniniwala na may demonyo. Nakakatawa nga eh. Hindi ko maintindihan bakit ganun kasi hindi binabasa yung Bible. Madaming Kristiyano today ayaw naman ni maniwala na yung sakit posibleng galing sa demonyo. Tingin nila ganun to ganyan lang or science lang. May mga iba naman na maniniwala kay Jesus na sige forgiven ako pero yung depression nila feeling nila walang magawa si Jesus. Bakit? All of a sudden mas malakas ba si depression kaysa kay Jesus? E kung yung depression galing pala sa demonyo at si Jesus yung sagot. You know what I mean? So ang dami nating akala, ang dami nating unbelief sa mga lugar na hindi natin naintindihan simply because we did not spend time in the Word of God. Di ba? You know, a lot of Christians believe that when we die, we will go to heaven. Amen. Di ba? Most Christians would would stand in faith for that and be very confident. Oh, pag ako namaday, punta akong heaven. Pero, kaya mo bang maniwala 
Now you can manifest heaven on earth. Do you know that? You know that God has given you the power of the Holy Spirit. The power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is inside you. Acts 1 verse 8 tells us that he, was, he has given us power from on high to be witnesses even to the end of the earth. Para saan yung power? Nasaan yung power? Diba? So, may mga scriptures na ganyan na nung ako nagbabasa ng Bible para sa sarili ko, ang tanong ko sa sarili ko is bakit hindi ito pinag-uusapan? Bakit hindi ito tinuturo? Nasa Bible naman ito. There has to be something more to this. Diba? Why is it that people don't talk about this? And I realize it's because there are so many unbelieving believers. That Christians are willing to believe until salvation and after that, ayaw na nalang pag-usapan, ayaw na nalang pag-isipan kasi daw magulo. But if you do that, you will miss out on the goodness and the grace of God in your life. Na yung binaya, binayaran ni Jesus sa cross, napakalaki. Hindi lang para magpagpatay mo, akit ka, ng, uh, akit ka ng langit, iwas kang imperno. That's not all Jesus paid for. Jesus paid for so much more. Tandaan mo. Jesus is God who humbled himself in the form of man. Isipin mo, creator ka ng lahat. Ano ba yung tao? Parang alikabok lang yan. Pero you took the form of man and binastos ka? Pinatay ka ng criminal's death? Dinuraan ka? Para saan? Ang laki nung binayad ni God? Ang laki nung binayad ni Jesus? Ang laki nung pain na tiniis niya sa krus? At, at, at nung, nung, when he was when he was scourged when he was whipped para saan ang laki-laki ng binayaran niya bakit ito lang yung natatanggap natin guys okay, so hindi natin inuutusan si God hindi tayo nagde-demand kay God kasi hindi naman natin deserve the only thing that makes us deserving is Jesus Christ in us but yung ikaw lang na walang Jesus you don't deserve anything we don't deserve anything we are we were all um sinners in need of a savior So, yung binigay ni God, hindi to mayabang pakinggan. Binigay niya lang talaga dahil mahal niya tayo. Bakit di natin tatanggapin? Sa laki, laki, laki ng binahayad niya, bakit di natin tanggapin? You know, madalas may example akong ginagamit. Na parang kunyari, um, kunyari buffet. Kunyari, nilibre ako ni Kuya Edgar sa buffet kasi mabayat si Kuya Edgar. Eh. Diba? Kunyari, kunyari, um, Kanyari Vikings, so medyo mahal. Alam ko ngayon, sarado yung mga buffet na yan. Pero kanyari Vikings, nilibre ako ni Kuya Gar. Tapos magkano yung bayad doon? Mahal, 999 yata o 1,000. I don't know. Kasi kung ganun. So pag nilibre ako ni Kuya Gar, babayaran niya yung buong presyo. Di ba? Binayaran niya na yung 1,000. Pero pag pumunta ako doon sa buffet, tapos sabihin ko kay Ed, Kuya Edgar, Kuya, tinapay lang ako tsaka tubig. Nakakahiya kasi. Di ba? Sabi niya, ano maramdaman ni Kuya Edgar? Diba, may inis siya sa akin na sa akin. Ang laki-laki ng binayad ko sa'yo. Laki-laki mong tao, tinapay lang kakainin mo. <laughs> diba? Sabi niya, ano ba naman yan? Bakit tinitipid mo yung binayaran ko na? Kay kumain ka ng 20 plato o ng, is, ng 10 plato, it's paid for. Bakit di mo kunin? Hindi, na, okay na ako, tinapay na. Parang sampal sa muka eh. Diba? May insulto ka na feeling mo, parang ano to? Parang ako. Sana sayang mo naman to, ang laki-laki ng binayad ko. Sana hindi ka na sumama. Sana doon ka na lang sa panaderia, gumastos kang gis gis pesos tapos nagpapabusog ka sa pinap, sa yung pinaputok na <laughs> na muna. 'Di ba? Okay na sana 'yun. Itinapay lang din kakainin mo. Bakit mo ako pinabayad ng 1,000? So, anong anong point ko? Example lang naman 'yun. Pero guys, ang daming binayad ni Jesus sa cross. But ayaw nating kunin yung iba. Ando na lahat. Andiyan na, buffet na. Bayad na. Binayaran niya. Yung pambayad niya, dugo at buhay na. He laid down his life for you. Anong binayaran niya? He paid for your healing. He paid for your salvation. He paid for your freedom. He paid for, for, for your provisions, for prosperity, for peace of mind, for lahat ng pangangailangan mo sa buhay na to. Binayaran na ni Jesus. Bakit di natin kunin? Ba't di natin tanggapin, nandyan na nakalatag. Ba't natin pinagpipilitan na hindi, okay na tayo dito. Okay na ako, sabaw lang, sabaw lang. Bayad na. 
ba't natin pinagpipilitan, ay, anuhin ko yung term, ha? bakit pinagpipilitan natin na forgiveness lang gusto ko, pero yung iba, ayoko, weird. Eh. Ang laki ng binahid ni Jesus. ba? Diba? Are we ungrateful to do that? So the problem is people believe that Jesus paid for their sins, but they don't see these other things or they don't want to. Yun yung unbelief. Bakit? Kasi hindi nila kilala. Dahil di sila nagbibigay ng oras sa salita ng Diyos. O, kung nagbibigay man sila ng oras sa salita ng Diyos, hindi nila sinasapuso. Inaaral lang. Dito lang. Hanggang dito lang si Jesus sa kanila. Hindi pwedeng dito lang. The Word of God is supposed to come alive in our heart. Hindi. Ang salita ng Diyos, guys, Jesus is the Word of God. Jesus is the truth. Okay? Si Jesus, uh, siya, ang, siya ang daan, siya ang paraan, siya ang katotohanan. Di ba? Sa, ano, sa John 14.6. So, ang katotohanan ay hindi lamang inaaral. Ang katotohanan ay naging tao, siya ay kinikilala. Hindi mo lang inaaral ang katotohanan, hindi lang dito yung katotohanan, siya ay kinikilala. You have to encounter and experience Jesus. That He's alive. That he is here. He cares about you. You are never alone. Kahit ganong kapangit yung pinagdadaanan mo ngayon. Andiyan si Jesus kasama mo. Problema, di lang natin siya pinapansin. O minsan, di lang tayo naniniwala na kaya niyang ayusin tong problema natin. O minsan, ayaw natin ibigay dahil nga wala tayong tiwala sa kanya. Ano ba, what did Jesus say about uh, himself? What did he confer? What does the word of God say? Para saan, ano bang mission ni Jesus? Let's go to Luke 4, verses 18 to 19. Luke 4, verses 18 to 19. It says here, it says here, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. So Jesus here, he was reading from the scroll of Isaiah. He was confirming that itong prophecy na to sa book of Isaiah, ako to, sabi ni Jesus. He read this in the synagogue. Binuksan niya yung scroll. Sinabi niya, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He anointed me to what? Preach the gospel. He anointed me to, to proclaim freedom or release to the captives sa lahat ng mga bihag. Pinakakawala na, pinapalaya na sila ni Jesus. Recovery of sight to the blind. Saan ka nakakita ang bulag na bumukas ulit yung mata? Di ba? And to set free, palayain, lahat ng mga oppressed, lahat ng mga nagihirap, lahat ng mga dumadaan na kung, sa kung ano-ano mga problema ngayon. Jesus has a solution for your problem. And the way that Jesus can move freely in our lives is simply through faith. If we, if we could just get rid of unbelief and dare to believe Jesus that He is a good God, He can freely move in our lives. Problema kasi, nauuna yung unbelief natin. Problema kasi, sasabihin ng iba, ito, guys, example lang, sabihin ng iba, ngayon, may sakit, may cancer, Jesus wants you healed, Jesus, Jesus loves you, Jesus wants you healed, sasabihin, ah, oo, oh, sige, pero kasi bihira lang, mira kayo, nagpapadoktor na ako. Wala na. Unbelief na yun. Unbelief na yun. Bakit, bakit sa Bible nakakapagpagaling si Jesus at bakit ngayon bihira na lang? Kasi sobrang daming unbelief. Na mas may faith pa yung tao sa mundo kaysa kay Jesus. Lahat. Because people don't spend time in the Word of God. They believe they are saved. Christians can believe that they're saved and forgiven. But pag sinabi mo healing, ah, medyo weird yan eh. Dito na ako sa doktor. Bakit ayaw? Eh sabi nga ni Jesus, yun yung mission niya. Jesus healed all the time. When he went around preaching the gospel, healing the sick, casting out demons, raising the dead, cleansing the lepers, opening blind eyes, yung pilay, naglakad, yung lumpo, tumatalon. Si Jesus yun. Asan na yung Jesus na yun ngayon? So, hindi porke hindi natin siya na-experience today, eh hindi na totoo yung salita ng Diyos. You know, we do not adjust the word of God to fit our experience. Dapat, yung experience natin mag-adjust sa Word of God. Kasi nga, ang unbelieving believer, pag sinabi mo, si Jesus may sagot sa problema mo, ang hahanapin niya dahilan para, 
hindi bro, di mo na intindihan. Mahirap talaga tong sitwasyon kasi ganito. Parang hindi nila nakikita ang solution si Jesus eh. Pero bakit sa Biblia ganun? Naniniwala ba talaga tayo sa Bible? Are we unbelieving believers? Or are we believers who receive the full gospel? Are we believers who receive the fullness of Jesus Christ, the fullness of who He is and His love? Di ba? Ang susi lang dito, mga kapatid, faith. Faith is the key that opens the doors of heaven to pour out in our lives. And unbelief is the wall that will block all that from happening. Di ba? Tiga mo. Yung mga, hindi na bago tong, ano na to eh, yung topic na to. Dahil yung disciples mismo, yung apostles mismo ni Jesus, yan din naman yung ano sa kanya. Tanong sa kanya. Punta tayo Luke 17. Luke 17, verses 5 to 6. Okay. Luke um, chapter 17, verses 5 to 6, it says, And the apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. Yan, madalas. Madalas itong pinapray ng Christian. Increase our faith. So the Lord said, If you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, Be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea. And it would obey you. So, okay. So guys, medyo, medyo, ito, medyo, para ang hirap intindihin o hirap paniwalaan ito statement na to. Na, Isipin mo guys, uh, sa salita mo lang, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, nakita na ba kayo ng mustard seed? Sobrang liit ng mustard seed. Okay? Sobra, sobra, sobrang liit ng mustard seed. And Jesus said that if you say, sa, kakausapin mo yung puno ng mulberry tree, does this make sense? Do you, if you say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea, it would obey maglalakad yung puno mula lupa at pupunta sa dagat dahil sa salita. So sasabihin ng iba, the unbelieving believer would say, hindi bro, ano lang yan, metaphor. Hindi bro, iba yung ibig sabihin ni Jesus. Bakit ka nagpapalusot? Bakit ka naghahanap ng dahilan na, hindi, hindi applicable yan. Hindi bro, hindi para sa atin yan. Bakit naghahanap ng palusot yung believer. Bakit di natin kaya paniwalaan si Jesus? Why 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 do we have to twist the words of Jesus? When Jesus says that if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, if you say to this tree, maglalakad yung puno na yan hanggang dagat, it will obey. It will obey. Why automatically? Ito, ito, isipin mo lang. Hindi, alam, alam ko hindi ko kayo naririnig. Pero kayo mismo, between you and God, di mo kailangan sabihin sa akin Pag binasa mo ba to, kaya mong paniwalaan na yung puno maglalakad. Ang hirap, di ba? Ang hirap, di ba? Ang hirap isipin na, na puno maglalakad. Wala ano mong puno naglalakad. Sa Lord of the Rings lahat ay yung puno na naglalakad. Eh. Sa pelikula lang naman yung puno naglalakad. Mayroon bang ganun? Eh nakasulat sa Bible eh. Anong pipiliin mo? Yung science? Yung ganito? O yung, yung Bible? Diyan, na, diyan magkakaalaman kung sino yung unbelieving believer. At sino talaga nagtitiwala kayo? I have not seen a tree walk yet, but I want to believe. I will I will spend time in the Word of God until I believe. I will spend time with the Holy Spirit in the presence of God until I believe. And I will see these mountains move. So I may not have seen a physical tree move, but I've seen cancer disappear. I've seen leukemia go away. I've seen demons go away. I've seen congestive heart failure disappear. I've seen hernia, hernias disappear. I've seen diabetes get cured. I have seen families come together. I've seen drug addicts restored. No rehab, no meds, just the word of God. I've seen schizophrenia addressed. I've seen multiple personalities, multiple personality disorder resolved. I've seen so many things fixed. I've seen deaf ears open. I've seen I've seen the, the the mute speak and broken bones fixed together and and short legs grow out. I've seen all those amazing things. Hindi pa ako nakita ng tree, pero yun nakita ko na. But I'm not gonna stop believing. So ano yung point ko? May sinabi si Jesus dito. Bakit natin gina justify na hindi, hindi yun yung ibig sabihin? Hindi kasi God. Why not 
believe that. Again, yung sabi ng apostles, increase our faith. Give me more faith. Si Jesus sumagot, hindi niya sinabing, ah, sige, bibigyan pa kita ng faith. O hindi niya sinabing, ne, ganito yan. Para dumami yung faith mo, dapat lagi kang magsimba. Dapat lagi kang magbasa. Dapat lagi. Walang sinagot si Jesus doon. It, when when the when people ask Jesus a question, ang sinasagot niya hindi yung gusto mong marinig. Ang sinasagot niya yung kailangan mo marinig. So he doesn't answer directly. Madalas yan pag binabasa mo sa Gospels, si Jesus tinutumbok yung ugat nung sitwasyon eh. So when the apostles asked him, apostles na to, ha, increase our faith. Sabi niya, kung may faith ka lang the size of a mustard seed, Ibig sabihin nun, you don't need more faith. There's no you, there's no such thing as more faith. It's not about hindi paramihan ng faith to. Hindi to increasing ng faith, hindi to palakihan ng ano ng ng faith or whatever. Um, the quantity or the measurement of your faith was irrelevant because all you needed was a mustard seed. Kung ganun kaliit na faith lang ang kailangan mo. At susunod na yung puno at maglalakad hanggang dati. O yung bundok gagalaw. Ano yun? Sabihin na naman, eh, bro, figurative it. Eh, 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 eh. That's not your decision. Do we believe what Jesus says or no? Are we unbelieving believers or what? Diba? So, you know, another insight lang, bakit mulberry tree? Actually, uh, marami akong alaga na mulberry. Okay? Uh, ang, ang trip ko, gardening kasi, yun yung hobby ko. So, um, marami akong alaga ng mulberry. And one thing you should know about a mulberry tree is that pag binaon mo yan sa lupa, okay, wag na wag na wag mong ibabaon yan sa tabi ng pader o sa tabi ng kalsada. Kasi sobrang lalim ng ugat yan, matitibag yung pader mo. Okay? Ang mulberry tree, sobrang lalim ng roots, hindi mo mahuhugot yan. So in other words, kaya alam ni Jesus yon. So sinasabi niya yung mulberry tree na ma- ma-pull out mo by the roots, impossible yun. Pero with faith, it's possible. You see what I mean? For for the ordinary person, kahit na may excavator ka pa, kahit may equipment ka pa, sobrang hirap magtanggal ng mulberry tree from the ground. But with faith, the size of a mustard seed, it is possible. Everything is possible to those who believe. So what what I'm trying to point out, mga kapatid, is that it is not a faith problem. It is an unbelief problem. Hence the topic tonight, yung help my unbelief. Kasi mga kapatid, hindi mo kailangan i-pray kay God na ma- ma- makaawa ka na, Lord, increase my faith. Lord, um, dagdagan mo yung faith ko kasi ganito, ganyan. Hindi mo kailangan na mas maraming faith. Kasi mustard seed lang, okay na. Kailangan mo lang tanggalin yung unbelief. It's not about more faith. It's about removing your unbelief. You know, in Romans 12, verse 3, we have a slide here. Romans 12, verse 3, basahin ko sa King James Version. I like the King James Version of this verse. Okay? Romans 12, 3, it says, For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Ano ibig sabihin nito, guys? Ano ibig sabihin nito? Na, you know what, um, hindi porke matagal ka na sa ministry, hindi porke leader ka na, hindi porke pastor ka na, eh, mas ma- automatic, mas malakas na yung faith mo. Hindi yun yung point. Eh. Don't think of yourself more highly than you think, than, than you ought to think. Think soberly. Because God has given to every man the measure of faith. Guys, lahat tayo binigyan ng faith. Ano yung measure? Ang measure, uh, parang ano yan, takal. Okay? Takal. So, kung may takal ako, kunyari, takal ng bigas, kung pumupunta kayo sa palengke, bili ka ng bigas, pag, pag one cup, isang takal, kahit na anong sandok mo dun, pare-pareho lang yan, di ba? O yung isang ta- isang baso. Kung uh, umorder ka ng, ano yun, yung sagugulaman, o isang basong ganyan, eh, yun at yun at yun lang naman ang sukat, sukat niya. So, in other words, Romans 12.3 is telling us that God has already given us faith. 
na we have re- received the measure of faith. So, hindi importante ganong kalaki yung measure ng faith. Ang importante, meron ka ng faith. Binigay na ni God. This is what the verse says. We have been given the measure of faith. He, again, hindi importante ganong kalaki o ganong karami yung, yung measure ng faith kasi faith the size of a mustard seed can already move mountains. So ano yung point ko? Bakit ko sinashare to? Ang punto ko, guys, hindi nyo kailangan humingi ng faith kasi meron na kayo. You already have faith. You don't need to ask God to increase it. You don't need to find more faith. You already have faith inside you as a gift from God. Inside you, you already have the faith to move the mountains. So ang tanong, how come the mountains aren't moving? Why? It's not a faith problem. It's an unbelief problem. It's not a faith problem. Inside you, you already have the faith. B- gift na ni God. Binigay na ni God yung grace. Binigay na ni God yung Holy Spirit. Binigay niya na yung power. Binigay niya pa yung faith para ma- 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 matanggap mo. You already have the faith to receive what God has given. Ang problema, si unbelief na kaharap. Yung pinagdadasal nyo, kapatid, kung ano man yan, yung iniiyak mo sa gabi kay God, nandyan na yung sagot. Pati yung paraan na matatanggap mo siya, nandyan na, binigay na sa'yo. God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. The problem is, yung unbelief natin humahala. So ano yung punto? Ano yung punto? Ano yung gusto kong tumbukin dito? Guys, yung pinagdadasal nyo, yung iniiyak nyo sa gabi, nandyan na. Tanggalin mo na lang yung unbelief mo. So hindi mo kailangan na more faith, hindi mo kailangan magmakaawa kay God, hindi mo kailangan iyakan at maglupa sa isip kay God para maawa siya sa'yo, tsaka i-bless ka niya. No, no, no. All you need to do is get rid of your unbelief. Get rid of your unbelief. And spend time in the Word of God. Kilalanin mo si God. Pag natanggal yung unbelief na yun, dadaloy ng malaya yung, yung biyaya ng Diyos sa buhay mo. Nyo, kadalasan damit daming tao humihingi kay God na Lord, bless mo ako, please maawa ka. You know what? Sa, sa Ephesians 1 verse 3, nakasulat sa Ephesians 1 verse 3, Blessed be the Lord our God who has given us every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Okay? It says in Ephesians 1 3 that God has already given you, us, every spiritual blessing in heaven. Hindi ako nagpauso nito, hindi to weird na turo dahil nasa Bible natin yan. Kahit na ano pang translation mong tignan yan, nakasulat doon, God has given us every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Saan? In Christ Jesus. Yung pinagdadasal natin, yung mga panalangin nyo, yung sagot nandun na, na kay Jesus Christ na. Pati yung faith na yung paraan natin para tanggapin yun mula kay Jesus, nandyan na rin. Ano nakaharang? unbelief. So guys, hindi naman sa ano ah, uh, metaphor, gawa tayo ng example. Uhaw na uhaw ka. Okay, uhaw na uhaw ka, nasa desyerto ka, di ba, walang tubig, wala, walang, walang maano. Ngayon, ano yung mas madali? Maghuhukay ka, gagawa ka ng deep well, gagawa ka ng poso, tapos anuhin mo yun, o tatang, tatanggalin mo lang yung bara kasi meron ng poso. Get yung example ko? Ano mas mahirap? Yung magdi-deep well ka, ikaw huhukay, ikaw gagawa ng ano, gagawin mo lahat ng ano yun, hahanapin mo kung saan may tubig, baka walang tubig, hanapin. or may isa doon, may poso na, tatanggalin mo lang yung bara, tanggalin mo lang yung harap. Nandun na. Ganun ang nangyayari sa kristyano. Nasa desyerto nga tayo, ayan na, may poso na, may, 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 May uh, may tubig na, may faucet na, nandiyan na lahat tapos na ginawa na para sa iyo. May nakaharang lang. Tatanggalin na lang natin yung harang. Yung harang na yun, unbelief. Pero pag natanggal mo yun, I promise you, the grace of God will flow in your life. And you will be a blessing to everyone around you. Hindi ka papabayaan ni God. Yung nakaharang dun, na, na lahat ng sagot na hinahanap yun, nandun na, nakaharang lang unbelief. Tanggalin natin yung unbelief. You know? And, you know, um, 
yung mga iba pag sinasabi pinag-uusapan to mga miracle mga ano naiilang sila kasi and then bro para sa mga apostle lang yan di naman ako apostle eh. di ba para kay Peter lang yan tsaka kay Paul tsaka kay John yun yung sa Bible eh, syempre iba panahon natin yun yung sinasabi nila uh, hindi ako nag-agree doon kasi John 14.12 sabi ni Jesus you will do the same works and even greater works alam nyo ba mga kapatid na inside each and every one of you is somebody else's miracle. Inside each one of you is somebody else's answered prayer. Ikaw yung paraan kung paano sasagutin ng Panginoon yung panalangin ng ibang tao. Ang problema lang, nakaharang yung unbelief. Uh, guys, di naman sa ano. Sino ba ako? I'm nobody. I'm a regular person. Wala akong Pumalpak nga ako sa buhay ko eh. Kaya nga sumabog lahat. Doon ko nahanap si Jesus na nasa ilalim na ako ng, ng lahat eh. Palpak ako. Pero bakit pag nagpe-pray ako may gumagaling? Wala naman akong power. Sino ba ako? Hindi, hindi dahil magaling ako, dahil hindi ako magaling. Hindi dahil marami akong ganito o malakas ako kay God. Dahil hindi, hindi totoo yun. Hindi totoo yun. There is no partiality with God. Romans 2.11 Pero bakit gumagana? Kasi natanggal ko yung unbelief. I dared to believe what God said. I dared to believe what the Bible says. So hindi lang pang apostle, hindi lang pang man of God, everyone who wishes to believe and who everyone who wishes to remove their unbelief will see the works of God in their lives. So 2 Peter 1 verse 1. Check ito. 2 Peter 1 verse 1. Nakasulat doon, Simon Peter a bond servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. So si Simon Peter yung naglakad sa tubig, si Simon Peter yung nakahuli ng isda na may pera sa bibig, si Simon Peter yung nagsabi dun sa lumpo, tumayo ka at maglakad. Si Simon Peter na ang dami-daming uh, ginawang milagro, di ba, na Peter shadow, yung anino niya nakakapagpagaling na may sakit. So ano yun, di ba? So Peter, a bond servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained a like Precious faith with us by the righteousness of God and Savior Jesus Christ. Mga kapatid, lahat tayo, tsaka yung, 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 yung lahat tayo ngayon, yung faith na meron ni Peter na naglalakad sa tubig at yung anino niya nakakahit is the same faith we have. It is having obtained like precious faith. Parehong precious faith with us. Yung faith na meron sa loob mo ngayon. Di ba kanina, Romans 12.3, God has given to each man the measure of faith. Ito naman sinasabi ni Peter na pareho tayong faith. Yung binigay ni God na faith kay Peter, yun din yung faith na meron sa loob mo ngayon. So bakit si Peter, pag yung anino niya nakakapagpagaling na may sakit? Kasi tinanggal niya yung unbelief. Faith is already inside you. Faith is already there. It's already alive. It's inside you. Ang tanong lang dito, how do you bring it out? Kasi guys, ito na, totoo lang ha. Religion has overcomplicated faith. Religion has made formulas for faith. Dapat ganito, dapat ganyan, dapat ganito. Ang faith, sobrang simple. Maniwala ka lang. Sobrang simple ng faith. Just believe. Jesus tells us yung childlike faith. Diba? Child, naririnig yan. Have faith as a child. Childlike faith. Yung sa Mark 10 verse 15, nasa sulat yan eh. Amin niya, Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it at all. Mabigat to ah. Childlike faith. Para, para pumasok ka ng kingdom of God, kailangan mong childlike faith. Faith like a child. So sa inyong mga may anak, di ba, sa murang edad, kahit anong sabihin mo sa anak mo, maniniwala sila sa iyo kasi wala silang mali siya. Wala silang dalawang isip na, ah, papa ko to, mahal ako nito. Papa ko to, aalagaan ako nito. Papa ko to, pag ako nadapa at umiyak, lalapitan ako nito, ah, kukunin niya ako. Papa ko to, pag nasugatan ako, siya yung magbebenda sa akin. Daddy ko to, ito yung nagpapakain sa akin pag gutom ako. Daddy ko to, pag may lagnat ako, siya mag-aalaga. Siya magpapagaling, siya magpapalakas sa akin ulit. Di ba? Pero ang problema, hindi yan yung turo ng religion. Hindi childlike faith. Naging komplikado, naging formula, naging programa yung faith, naging, 
okay, attend ka muna dito, attend ka muna doon, step by step, by step, by step. Tapos pag medyo matagal ka na, yun, sige, baka may faith ka na. Pero hindi pa rin, kasi kailangan mo to, kailangan mo yan. Si, sabi, ni, sabi ni Jesus, childlike faith. Ba't na lang ako maniwala? Pag sinabi ni Jesus, you are healed, bakit di na lang, thank you, thank you Lord. Amen, tapos, I'm healed, lahat na ako. Pero hindi, eh, daming, hindi mm, naman, sabi ng doktor, o ngayon, mas mata kasi doktor kay Jesus. So, hindi, wag, 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 don't get me wrong guys, hindi ko sinasabing masama ang doktor, hindi ko sinasabing mali ang doktor. Hindi ako against sa doktor, hindi ako against sa gamot. Okay, hindi ako against din. Malinaw lang. Pero ang sinasabi ko lang, there is a higher truth. There is a higher truth. And the word of God is a higher truth than the word of the doctor. So, kung, kung medyo lumalaban sa isip mo yun, tanong ko, bakit di ka naniliwala? Saan nanggagaling unbelief mo? Di ba? Hanapin yun, yun yung point din. That's the reason why I see miracles and others don't. Kasi natanggal ko si unbelief. So, ang ginagawa ko ngayong gabi, hindi ko sinasabing mas marunong ako dahil hindi. Ang punto ko lang, kung kaya kong gawin yun, kaya nyo rin gawin yun. Kasi hindi dahil special ako, dahil hindi ako special. If I can see amazing things, if God can work in my life, na sa lalim ng butas na hinukay ko para sa sarili ko, nakalabas pa ako by the grace of God, and I'm living a new life now, di bakit sa inyo hindi? If God can do that in my life, He can do it in your life. Why? Because God loves you. He loves you as much as He loves me. He loves me as much as He loves uh, Kuya Edgar. He loves Kuya Edgar as much as He loves anyone in this world. For God so loved the world. So, yung point ko lang is, mga kapatid, you already have the faith. You already have Jesus. You already have the Holy Spirit. You have the power inside of you. The grace of God is lahat na binigay sa'yo, yung buong buffet nandyan na, nakaahin na, ready na, kumain ka na lang, tapon mo lang yung unbelief mo. Tapon mo lang unbelief mo. You know? So, um, you know, guys, the only way we can do that is if we spend time in the Word of God. We learn to value the Word of God. We learn to spend time there. You know, and, and, um, and, and, alam niyo kung ano yung talagang factory of faith, yung talagang nagpapatibay na, na binubura yung unbelief natin is when you hear God. There's a verse in Romans 10 verse 17. Romans 10 verse 17. It says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You know, so when you hear the word of God, guys, we are supposed to hear the word of God. We are supposed to have an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit hanggang sa punto na talagang naririnig mo siya. Yung Bible, parang sinabi ko kanila, yung Bible, hindi lang inaaral. Yung Word of God, hindi lang inaaral. Siya ay kinikilala. Dahil yung Word of God, naging tao. Pangalan niya, Jesus. We have to, Christians, every Christian, hindi lang to pang pastor, hindi to pang leader, hindi to pang apostle o pang malalim lang. Every single Christian, has the Holy Spirit inside him or her. Dapat lahat tayo nakakarinig sa Panginoon. Dahil pag nakakarinig tayo mula sa Panginoon, nabubuhay ang ating faith, ang ating pananampalataya. You are supposed to hear God. Kaya sa amin sa, sa, sa metanoia, sa ministry namin, we're not just here to teach you na ah, ito yung ibig sabihin yan, ito yung ibig sabihin ito. Hindi yun yung punto. Ang gusto namin makita nyo, kung paano namin naririnig si God, para kayo din marinig nyo si God ng ganun. Yung faith nyo, hindi dapat na sa akin. Yung faith nyo, hindi dapat na sa prayer ko o sa power o sa sa faith ko dahil madami nang gumaling. Hindi, hindi, huwag kayong magka-faith sa akin dahil tao lang ako. Your faith should be in the Word of God. So ang minomodelo namin sa ministry is, mga kapatid, balik tayo sa salita ng Diyos. Hindi kami special, ikaw din hindi ka special. Tao ka lang din, pareho tayo. Pero yung Word of God buhay. And if you learn to hear the Holy Spirit inside of you, if He speaks to you, faith comes alive and unbelief gets pushed away. Di ba? Why settle for second-hand faith? Why settle for, kasi sabi ni pastor, sabi ni kuya ganito, sabi ng leader ko ganito. Uh, guys, I don't mean offense, ha? pero wala akong pakialam kung ano sinabi ng pastor mo. Pero may pakialam ako kung ano sabi ng Bible. 
Kasi yung pastor mo o yung leader mo o sino man yan, kahit na ganong kagaling pa yan, will bow down to the Word of God. I am accountable to the Word of God. You are accountable to the Word of God because the Word of God is truth, the highest truth. So kahit na anong galing pang mag-preach niyan o galing magturo niyan, at the end of the day, walang kwenta yun kung walang Bible verse na susuporta. So, you know, so don't put your faith in your leader. Don't put your faith na porke member ka ng isang church o isang organization, okay na ako. Taga dito kami, kami yung mga ganito. DNA namin kasi kami, ganito kami. Guys, huwag ganun. Yung faith mo kay Jesus lang. Sa word of God lang. Wala ka ng ibang pagkukuhanan, wala ka ng ibang pagkukugutan ng faith other than kay Jesus lang. ba? Diba? Kasi mahirap pag yung faith mo na sa tao, paano pag wala din? When people, oh, minsan may mag-request sa akin, Brother Ron, pwede mo bang pag-pray to? Pwede mo bang pag-pray? Sige yan, sure, walang problema. Pero bago kita pag-pray, tuturo ko muna sa'yo saang verses ang ang pinangahawakan ko. Ngayon, pray for healing. I will show you what verses ang hawak ko para sa healing. Bakit? Kasi pag nagkasakit ka ulit at wala ako, paano na? Paano pag may nangyari ulit? Paano pag sumakit ulit tapos wala ako, di mo ako matawagan? Your faith should not be on me because I'm, I'm no one to have faith in. But if you have the word of God, hindi na maaagaw sa'yo kahit kailan. Sayong, sayong, sayo na yan. Because that is yours, your faith in your heart through the Holy Spirit. So our faith should be focused on the word of God. You know, and the goal of discipleship is to, to teach you and show you how to stand in the word and hear God for yourself. We already have the same faith, you and me. So if I see miracles, you will see miracles. Tanggalin mo lang yung unbelief. Diba? You know, a few more verses na lang, guys. Sorry, medyo kumextend ako ng ano dito. Pero, um, anyway. So Romans 12 verse 2. Ay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Galatians 2.20, I'm sorry. Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2.20 is a very popular verse sa mga Christians. Galatians 2.20, sabi doon, uh, I like the King James Version here. It says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Guys, crucified with Christ. Yung old you is gone. Napakuna sa krus yung sinner. You, the life that you now live, is the life of Christ. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. And when Christ lives in you, guess what? His faith is inside you. So now, the life that you live in the flesh, you live by the faith of the Son of God. Hindi mo kailangan ng more faith. Yung faith mismo ng Son of God, faith mismo ni Jesus yung nabubuhay sa loob mo ngayon. You don't need to ask, Lord, increase my faith. Dahil hindi tama yung prayer na yun. Hindi nga sila sinagot ni Jesus. Eh. Sabi niya, faith the size of a mustard seed will already move mountains, will already move the mulberry tree. You already have the faith of Jesus inside of you. And don't get me wrong, guys. Bible verse to, ha? so hindi ko pa uso to. Di ba? So, ang problema kasi is, again, hindi paramihan ng faith. Kailangan lang tanggalin yung unbelief. Romans 12.2, it says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the, the, the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Guys, as you renew your mind, as you renew your mind, you are transformed. As you renew your mind, you are transformed and unbelief is kicked out. And your faith, the faith of the Son of God inside you comes alive. The faith that lives in you, na binigay ni God as a gift inside of you, will come alive. But you have to renew your mind. So ang tanong dyan, sino papakinggan mo? Yung mundo o yung word of God? Will you conform to this world? Ano, makikifear na rin tayo sa lahat ng taong takot na takot sa COVID, ng ganito, ganyan, ah, kakainin tayo, ng ganito, ganyan. Na, ano mo, guys, hindi ko sinasabing walang COVID. Alam kong, I know, I, I have lost, I have five friends who died. Okay? So I know, that COVID is real. Alam ko yun, hindi ko din discount Pero, hindi ako takot sa COVID. Bakit? Kasi mas malaki yung God ko eh. Kasi protected ako ni God, alam ko eh. Kasi yung blood ni Jesus, nasa akin eh. Because I'm walking in, in, the, in divine health because God takes care of me because I've given my life to God. 
dahil sa pag-renew ko ng mind sa salita ng Diyos, nakilala ko si God, naging nagkatiwala ako at nagkaroon ako ng faith maniwala na hindi niya ako pababayaan kahit kailan. You have to renew your mind. Keep out the unbelief. Kick out the unbelief. Focus on hearing the Holy Spirit. And I tell you, that faith that God gave you, it will move mountains. In Hebrews 11 verse 1, it says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Guys, faith is what takes the invisible and brings it to the visible. Faith is what takes from heaven and brings it to earth. Faith is what takes from, from the heavenly places provided by God through grace and brings it here on earth to meet your need and to, 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 to be an answer to your problem. You know, so Mark 11 verse 23. Mark 11 verse 23. It says, So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Guys, pati bundok gagalaw. Pati bundok gagalaw if you believe and do not doubt in your heart. Wala nang problema yung faith. Meron na tayong faith. Ano, malinaw yun. Same faith as the apostles. Same faith as the Son of God. Same faith God gave as a gift, as a measure. Meron na tayong paraan tanggapin yun. Problema lang si unbelief. So as long as you can remove the doubt in your heart, mountains will move. So ano yung mountain sa buhay mo ngayon? May solusyon ka na kay Jesus Christ. May solusyon ka na sa salita ng Diyos. May faith ka na para pagalawin yun. Tanggalin mo na lang si unbelief. Ulitin ko yung sinabi ko kanina, don't let your circumstances determine your understanding of the Word of God. Dapat yung circumstances mo mag-adjust sa Word of God. Diba? So, you know, so again, you have the faith, guys. You have the faith. Saan yung nilalagay? Are you putting it in science? Are you putting it in superstition? Are you putting it in yourself? Sa sarili mong lakas o capacity o sarili mong talino or binibigay mo kay God. It's not a faith problem. It is an unbelief problem. So do you have faith enough to believe for something like healing? Di ba? You know, there's a verse in Isaiah 53 verse 5. It says, He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities, for our sins. He was beaten so we, he could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. Diba? So, kung kaya mong maniwala na yung sugat ni Jesus, binayaran yung kasalanan natin. Ibig sabihin, no, kaya mo rin maniwala na yung, yung mga stripes sa likod niya, yung, yung, yung pinalo siya sa likod niya, when he was whipped on his back, na yung likod niya nilatigo hanggang magmukhang tosino na, may binayaran siya. If he was beaten so we could become whole, binugbog siya, dinuroan, sinampal, nilagyan ng crown of thorns, para maging buo tayo ulit. He also paid for our healing. So, why, bakit yung mga Christian kayang maniwala na, oo nga, naniwala kami, He paid for our sins. Pero yung healing parang hindi. Hindi pwede guys eh. Kasi isang verse lang to eh. Ang pinapoint out ko, if you can believe that you are forgiven, you have enough faith to believe that you are healed. You don't need more faith. You just have to remove your unbelief. Amen? So guys, um, again, I don't know what mountains you have in your life now. I don't know what's going on sa buhay nyo o mga pinaglalaban nyo o mga iniiyak nyo sa gabi pero andito ako para sabihin sa inyo, meron ng sagot. Yung sagot na sa Word of God. May faith na kayo para tanggapin ito. Wala nang imposible para sa inyo because of Jesus Christ. The only way to get through it and to receive it Tanggalin mo yung unbelief. Amen? Amen. So thank you guys for that opportunity to share. Praise the Lord. So Kuya Edgar, I'm not sure what you have next. If you... Um... Okay. to let everyone know, I live straight by Facebook and a lot of people
people are watching on Facebook. Awesome. It's good. All right, Angel. You uh, mute Angel uh, G. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Brother Ron Jaworski, for that very, very powerful message. Um, so again, um, I'd like to remind everyone, uh, we are also live on Facebook. So um, you can also share this uh, meeting, this fellowship, para naman, syempre, ma-share din natin yung truth of God's word na we learned tonight. Um, ayon. So it's time for the question and answer portion. Um, if you guys have questions, you can put it on the chat box, then I can read, or you can also um, unmute if you if you have your questions ready. Pero kung wala pa, uh, may na kare din ako nta no. Go ahead. Ask your question first, Go. Angel. Go. Mauna ka na. Mauna ka na. <laughs> Um, uh, okay, I'll, I'll start na lang. Um, so, Brother Ron, I want to ask, because um, you already spoke about yun nga, renewing of the mind and the only way to um, remove unbelief is through the word of God. But I want to ask, because I always have this encounter, especially I have uh, many friends na ganito din yung kinukwento sa akin. So sometimes I really don't know how to answer them. So... Um, yung situation kasi is, like what I want to ask is, what do you say about um, science and people's notion of God speaking to them or directing them through science? Tapos kasi ang nangyayari, because of that um, sinasabi ng experience or divine experience, parang may certain belief na sila na pinangahawakan na God did this for me or God told me that I should do this. Um, can that be considered unbelief? And my second follow-up is, should people get rid of religion to get rid of unbelief? Oh, those are good questions, and I love it. You know, so, um, ayaw, correct mo na lang yung ano ko, understanding ko kung ano. Pero you're saying, you mean, yung mga signs, like, you mean like supernatural experiences, tama ba? Or something like a personal encounter with God, is that correct? Why yes, yes, Bob. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. So, you first and foremost, um, I don't want to limit God to kasi yung mga iba masyadong kinakahon si God. So, God definitely can use signs. God can use visions, dreams, he could use angels, he could use supernatural to call your attention or to tell you something, or to speak something to you. He could speak to you in an audible voice. He could do supernatural things. Pero here's the thing. Hindi porque nangyari once, gagawin mo ng formula. Okay? And hindi porque uh, supernatural experience siya, uh, automatic kay God na. You know, First John 4 tells us to test the spirits. Always test the spirits. You know, kasi... You know, even 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 the devil can disguise himself as an angel of light. So, not all supernatural experiences are from God. Um, that is a fallacy. The problem is a lot of people automatic porque supernatural or ganito si God na kagad, which is very dangerous. Yung akin, so I'm not against um I'm not against supernatural experiences. Uh, I have many many of them. I just don't talk about it. I don't talk about it very often. Hindi ko kailangan pag-usapan, hindi ko kailangan i-share, but I see things that a lot of people would tataas ang kilay, siguro papakamot ng ulo. I have experienced God in many, many ways that uh, would surprise a lot of people. Pero yung akin lang, hindi ko siya hina-highlight. Kasi ang focus ko, word of God. And if I do have uh, an experience or a sign from God na feeling ko, ganito, kailangan ko gawin, I tell, I tell the Lord, Lord, kausapin niyo ako sa word. Kasi sa word of God, hindi tayo magkakamali. Yung margin of error, napakaliit. Pag dumiretso ako sa word of God. You know, the, the, the Bible tells us that the word of God, it, it, it is the sure word of prophecy. Hindi ka magkakamali pag bumalik ka sa word of God. The word, the God cannot lie. So, if I receive a, a vision or a sign or something, I hear something from the Lord na medyo 
uh, hindi ako sure kung ba talaga to God o ganyan. Hindi ko, I set it aside, I go back to the Word of God, and I say, Lord, dito mo ako usapin. Lagi naman tayo nag-uusap dito. Ayoko magkamali. The Bible is the sure word of prophecy. But don't get me wrong, I'm not against those experiences. All I'm saying is, lahat ng mga signs and ganito and ganyan, make sure that you test it with the Word of God. Kasi ang problema dyan, kaya maraming nauuto, maraming nagiging formula, maraming nagiging religious about that stuff, it's because they don't balance it with the Word of God. Nalulusutan sila ng kalaban kasi, um, na, nalulusot na sila ng kalaban kasi they don't know the Word. And because they don't know the Word, yun na, kung saan-saan na napupuntang kawirduhan yung, uh, yung mga practice. And um, so I'm not sure if that really answers your question. But um, in connection to your follow-up na yung religion ba kailangan matanggal para matanggal yung unbelief, unbelief. You know, I, I believe so. Jesus came to undo religion. Okay? So a lot of people probably, oh, grabe naman, Brother Ron, er, di ba, anong tawag mo sa ginagawa natin? Di ba, di ba religion to? There is a difference between religion and relationship. There is a huge difference between religion and relationship. Religion is man's approach <laughs> towards God. Religion is man's um, attempt to reach God and to know God and to see God. Yet, yet what Jesus did, the gospel, is God came down to become man and give us His Spirit to live in us. Mariktad. Si God yung nag-abot sa atin. Si God yung nag-leave ng 99 to find the lost one. You know? And 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 if you if you put Religion is nothing more than faith in systems and programs. It's faith in systems and programs and doing this and doing that and all these formulas para makalapit ka kay God. Where in reality, nandito na siya. He is with us. He is in us. He loves us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. If we just choose to believe the word of God and not depend on signs and 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 all these things. As lo- uh, guys, totoo lang, all you need is the word. All you need is the word. Sapat na yung word. Sapat na yung word through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will make the word of God come alive in your heart. Doon pa lang. Hindi na, hindi na. Ay, so, ano? Psalm 119 ba yun? I think verse 50. I'm not sure. But you know, the, word, the, the word of God is a lamp unto my feet. Diba? A light to my path. So yung magbubuhay sa atin, yung mag-guide sa atin, talagang word of God. Amen. So I hope that helps answers your question. Thank you so much. Next question. I, I think I, I see a question here uh, from Rina. It says, Kaninong prayer po ba ang pinapainggan ni Lord? Mga righteous people lang po ang sinasagot kasi some wicked people claiming that God answered their prayer. So actually, you know what? I, I um, the if you notice in James five, it says that the prayer of the righteous man availeth much, or the or the prayer, the effective prayer of a righteous man, diba, avails much. So ngayon, the, here's the here's the misconception. Na si God, si God transactional. The mis the misconception is sa Old Testament pag nag Pag nagpe-pray ka, pag-iisipan ni God, tapos kung medyo aligned sa ano niya, eh, sasagutin niya. Kung trip niya. Kung hindi, eh, sorry ka na lang. Yun ang turo ng religion about God. In the New Testament, it's very, very different. In the New Testament, bago ka pa humingi, gumawa na si God ng paraan through Jesus Christ ng probisyon para sa kailangan niya. In the New Testament, it's not about asking God, papakinggan ka niya, kung trip niya, tutulungan ka niya. Ito, I just want to share something very, very quickly, very quickly to answer that question. Um, when the Lord created the universe, when the Lord created the world in Genesis 1 and 2, okay, uh, yung buong mundo, ginawa niya, ganong karaming hangin yung ginawa niya? Diba? Ganong karaming hangin yung ginawa niya? Ganong karaming tubig yung ginawa niya? Ganong karaming uh, halaman yung ginawa niya. Diba? Nag... Pero ilan lang yung tao nun? Kasi ito na yun. Eh. Hindi naman nag-create si God ng more air. Hindi naman sabi ni God, uy, kulang yung tubig sa earth. Teka, dagdagan pa natin. 
Hindi naman sinabi ni God na, uy, yung bundok, parang bitin. Dagdagan pa natin. When God created everything, His creation was perfect. So, ito tanong ko, ilan ba yung tao nung umpisa? Di ba dalawa lang? Si Adam and si Eve. Right? And on the seventh day, God rested. So, the seventh day, God rested, hindi naman napapagod si God. Hindi nag-rest si God dahil pagod si God, dahil inaantok na siya, dahil medyo malaki yung nagastos yung power. Walang ganun eh. Unlimited yung power ni God. Eh. Nagpahinga si God dahil tapos na siya. He rested because his creation was complete. ba? Diba? So, yung point ko is that all those years ago, all those years ago, if God created all those things and then now in 2020, we have 8 billion people, pero sapat pa rin yung hangin, sapat yung tubig, sapat yung lupa, hindi naman tayo nagugutom, ilan yung gamit natin at t-shirt natin sa cabinet na hindi natin nagagamit? Ilan yung mga laruan ng bata o mga luma mong gamit o luma mong TV na nakabodega lang? Guys, we live in a period of prosperity today. Naisip ni God na in 2020, 8 billion na ang tao sa mundo. Kaya naman naghihirap yung tao dahil sa greed ng tao. Pero design ni God is perfect. Before you needed anything, God already knew. Napagplanuhan na ni God to. Napagplanuhan na ni God na in 2020, ganito karami tao. We will have hospitals, we will have electricity. Everything was laid out. Plano ni God lahat na. Napaghandaan niya tayo. So, Ang point ko is, yung prayers natin, di ba napaghandaan niya rin? So, hindi siya matter of, I ask God, pag-iisipan ni God, God will answer. Actually, baliktad. Before you needed anything, binigay niya na lahat through Jesus Christ. Ang problema is, hindi natin natatanggap dahil nga, may unbelief tayo. Yung sagot sa problema mo, nandun na. It's all, it's all in Jesus Christ. Philemon 1.6, yun eh. Yung sabi niya, I pray that the, your... your uh, the fellowship of your faith may become effective through the knowledge of every good thing that is in you. Diba? For Christ's sake. Every good thing that is in you. For Christ's sake. Lahat ng kailangan mo, nasa loob mo na. Ilalabas mo na lang by faith. Ang problema lang, may unbelief na kumaharang. So hindi problema yung answering problem. Umuo na si God. Uh, 2 Corinthians 1.20 says all the promises of God are yes and in Him, Amen, through Jesus Christ. So, it's not a sending problem, it is a receiving problem on our end. The answering prayer, or answered prayer, kaya hindi siya sinasagot o nasasagot, actually, nasagot na siya. Ang problema, hindi natin natatanggap dahil nga may unbelief tayo. So, yeah, yun ang, that's my, uh, there. we have a few more questions here. It says... Okay. Bakit po may mga taong anti-Christ don't have really that faith but they are living masaganang life. Okay. Okay. Um, pwede kang yumaman na wala si God. Daming salbahe na mayaman. Pwede kang yumaman na wala si God. Nasa fallen world tayo. ba? Pero yung kayamanan na yun, empty. Kasi Proverbs 10 verse 22 says, The blessing of the Lord, He adds no sorrow with it. Walang kapalit na masama. Walang kapalit na whatever. Pero tingnan mo, lahat ba ng mayaman, masaya? Yung mga celebrities, nag a Yung mga celebrities, ah, puro sleeping pills, puro psychologist, puro, puro ano, nagsusuicide. Yung mga iba, nagsisira ng buhay. May pera naman sila. So yung point doon, ang sukatan ng prosperity is not money, it's not wealth, it's not fame or fortune. Ang sukatan ng tunay na prosperity is meron ka bang God o wala? Kasi you could have all the money in the world, but you could be sad and broken. Tingko mo si Solomon. Solomon, the richest king in history, sa sobrang yaman niya, yung pilak, walang halaga. Parang bato lang na regular sa sahig. ba? So yung point nun is, pag binasa mo yung Ecclesiastes, Solomon was depressed. Solomon was, sabi niya, walang punto yung buhay. It's like chasing after the wind. Sinubuha ko na lahat, naglasing, nagganito, lahat ng pinagtripan niya na lahat. Walang punto yung buhay niya. Malungkot si Solomon. Ni hindi siya nakakatulog na mahimbing. Si Solomon natutulog, ang bodyguard niya, 60, nakapalibot. Lakas ng tama niya. Walang gera. Pero praning siya. So ang point ko, ang point ko, hindi pera ang solusyon. 
hindi pero ang solusyon. So pwedeng yumaman pero that doesn't mean you're prosperous. True prosperity is when you have God alive in your heart. Okay, so next question. Okay, next question. How can you explain that God does not allow sickness? God allowed sickness to Job. That God allowed plagues to come to the Egyptians. Okay, so this is a super long um, teaching. I do have videos on this. And I do have a lot of teachings on this, which I, I don't want to tackle now because so we're going to be long here. But a quick answer would be, especially on on Job. Okay, so it's a bit controversial here. But if you say that God allowed sickness, why are you still using it? Why are you still using it? Kung bigay ni God sa iyo yan o pinayagan niya, meron siyang seal of approval na you deserve to get sick. Bakit kang papagamot? Hindi ba dapat tiisin mo? Namnamin mo? To, to, pa, pagamot ka pa doktor ka, that's disobeying God. So, going back to Job, why did God allow it? He did not. And that is, uh, I, I have, I, I do have a video on that. I could pass it on to, uh, to Kuya Edgar if you want to dig deep. Kasi I want to support it through scripture. It is very, very. I I want to show you, kung saan talaga sa Bible na ikita yung heart ni God about that. Pero you have to reconcile kasi sovereignty with goodness. Hindi po eding isalam. Hindi po eding goodness lang walang sovereignty. Hindi po eding sovereignty lang, and then you question goodness. The reason why God, I say God did not allow that is that number one, wala naman covenant si Job. Lang confident si Job. He is from the land of Uz. He was a foreigner. He had no, um, he he had no uh covenant with God. He had no promises to hold on to by God. He admits it in Job forty two that he says, "I've heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees sees you. Therefore, I repent." Kasi mali lahat ng sinabi ni Job. Satan nagpaalam daw kay God. God never said yes. So that's why be careful kung anong translation mo sa Bible. Ang sinabi ni God, behold, everything he has is in your power. Why is that? Because Satan, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4, is called the God of this world. Go check it yourself. 2 Corinthians 4 4. Satan is called the God of this world. 1 John 5 verse 19 says that the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. We live in a fallen world with Satan is the one who's ruling this world. Kaya may war. Kaya may rape, kaya may abortion, kaya may 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 um may may murder, may stealing. It's because this whole world is fallen. People have free will. Si Satan ang namumuno. So yung si Job, ang medyo ang issue sa kanya is lagi siya ginagamit ng Kristiano to justify bakit okay lang silang may sakit at bakit okay lang na pangit buhay nila. So people say, what about Job? I say, what about Jesus? Jesus conquered. Satan, Jesus kicked his butt. Jesus is is above all creation, above all things. Jesus is the name above all names. Jesus gave us authority over all the power of the enemy. Luke ten nineteen. Jesus gave us uh, the, the the a command to heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead. In, in Matthew ten, Luke nine, Luke ten says that Mark sixteen. Jesus tells us that if we believe, signs and wonders and miracles will follow. The demons will be cast out. And all this, in uh, 1 John 4, 4, it says, Greater is He that is in us than He that is in the world. So yung spirit sa loob natin, mas malakas, mas makapangyarihan sa spirit na nasa mundo. Bakit lahat ng tao nakafocus kay Job? Para i-justify kung bakit pangit buhay, buhay natin. Kaysa tumingin tayo kay Jesus at isipin natin, why aren't we victorious when Jesus already paid for our victory and paid for this new life? Di ba? So, um, saan na ba yan? Okay. And, and yung sa Egyptians, Egyptians was a form of judgment. Okay? So, that is a different context, a different dispensation. So, hindi sa allowed yun eh. Ungodly sila. It was righteous for God to render judgment. Iba yung usapan ng time na yun. Uh, we are not the Egyptians. We are under a new covenant. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.19, the Lord is not counting our trespasses against us. 1 John 2.2 2 tells us that Jesus paid for the sins of the world and that we live now in the age of grace. Na 2 Peter 3.9, that the Lord is not willing that any of us be destroyed, but all come to repentance. So, hindi mo, 
kailangan natin matignan yung context. Hindi pwede, ah, porque ginawa niya dito, ah, tuloy-tuloy na lahat. Kasi kung ganun, pag sinabi na lang walang difference ang Old and New Testament, ba't pa namatay si Jesus sa cross? You know, something happened on the cross na hindi na pag-uusapan ng tama. There is a big difference. My model is not Job. My model is Jesus. My model is not Pharaoh. My model is Jesus. You know, Colossians 1.27 says, Christ is in us. So I will see the world and deal with the world as Jesus tells me, not as Job, not as David, not as Solomon, not, not as Moses. Dahil he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is even greater than John the Baptist. So we have a better covenant with better promises, diba? Hebrews 8.6 yata yun. And um, hindi tayo talunan. Kaya nga kailangan natin ng Savior. Kaya tayo na save dahil by Jesus na tayo, hindi na tayo talunan. We are now more than conquerors in Him. Okay? All right. I'll move to the next question. Okay. Next question is... Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Na, um, Acts 10, 12 to 17, pangitaan ni Pedro... About sa mga hayop na in-offer kay Lord, okay. The real meaning of the word, eating of dinuguan, blood is a symbol of life. Okay, um, okay. Yung, yung point nung vision ni Peter nung time na yun was to show that the Holy Spirit, kasi dati yung salvation is sa Jews lang eh. Dahil nga ni-reject ng Jews yung ano, ito yung kay Cornelius, nakita niya yung vision na uh, the Gentiles are now being welcomed to the kingdom of God. The Gentiles are now being adopted into the as children of God. Akala kasi ng mga Jew, sila lang. Ang Jewish uh, Mosaic law, bawal lang kumain ng ganito, bawal kumain ng ganyan, daming rules, daming law. So ang pinakita ni God kay Peter through a vision is lahat yan, kill and eat, okay na. Wala nang distinction, wala nang hati-hati. Lahat yan, ano yan, symbolic yun of showing na the Gentiles are now being welcomed into the kingdom of God. Hindi lang para sa Jew, hindi lang para sa may law of Moses. Anyone who believes, anyone who calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, hindi siya literal, pero at the same time, um, at the same time, uh, yung, yung, yung mga bawal kumain, bawal ganito, actually, pinag-uusapan ni Paul yan, na it's not about I say, do not say yung ginawang clean ni Lord wag mong tatawagin na unclean yung mga abstaining from foods and this and that kasi bawal kasi ganyan uh, Paul calls that demonic doctrines okay Paul calls that demonic doctrines in um, in Timothy parang 1 Timothy 4 yata so wag tayong bumalik sa law not everything is good I, I, everything is allowed but not everything is you know um, beneficial so, teka, I'll move to the next question. Medyo madami to. Okay. Brother Ron, uh, Sister Joanne raise her hand. Sabi niya, bago daw po siya maging busy sa work. May question daw po siya. Okay, okay. Sige, go. Sister Jo. Sister Jo. Ayan, there. Um, hello, good evening. Good evening, Brother Ron. And um, actually, I have uh, the same questions like um, Kuya Edgar and Ati Osman, but I just want to say this because um, it is all about, yeah. about um, um, Job and this is about for ourselves. So you said that um, anything bad that happens to us is not from God. And a while ago, my husband just shared about all the bad experience he had in the past that once he was a drug dealer, a pusher, an abuser, a user, and a womanizer. So by that experience, we came to know God. And the good thing is we have a chance to share that bad experience through a testimony on how God is being alive and how God moves in our midst. So is it that um, God uses that bad circumstances and allows that bad things to happen to reveal His glory unto us? Okay. So what you're referring to is Romans 8.28. That, that God causes all things to work for the good of those who love God. Diba? So uh, ako rin, ganun din yung lifestyle ko. I used to be like that. I used to be that guy. I used to be a bad guy. I used to be stuck with drugs and alcohol and this and stuff. Pero sino ba yung nag-drugs? Si God o ako? Sino ba yung pumili humit-hit? Ako o si God? Pinilit ba ako ni God? Did He allow me to do it? Kasi where do we stop when the God allows it? You know what I mean? There is a balance between sovereignty and free will. So while God can use those negative things, and ako rin, don't get me wrong, I, I, I was in ground zero. Doon ko nahanap si Jesus. 
So hindi ko sinasabing ano pero hindi ko sinasabing ano pero nag ground zero ako dahil kasalanan ko. It was the consequence of my action. Walang kinalaman si God doon. Umabot ako sa ground zero dahil hindi ko pinakinggan si God. Kasi si God, Jeremiah 29:11. Sabi niya, the, the his plans are of good, not of evil. Plans to give us a future and a hope. So, ang nangyayari is why will we twist na porke bad yung experience natin si God na kagad? Hindi ba pwedeng pagkakamali natin na sa sobrang galing ni God? Actually, mas magaling siya dahil yung kalat natin nagawa niyang masterpiece. Rather than siya yung nagsira, hindi consistent sa character niya. You know, He is a God of life, not the God of death. He is the God of... Ano. So, ang hirap lang kasing gawing formula. Um, again, don't get me wrong. Paano yung mga ibang adik na hindi pa nakikilala si Jesus? Kung si God yung nag-cost nun sa husband niya or sa akin, na dating ganito, dating ganyan, tapos nakilala namin si Jesus, pa, paano yung mga adik na hindi nakilala si Jesus? Paano yung si adik na namatay as um, as drug adik? O yung adik na nirape yung sariling anak? God allowed that? Saan nagsistop yung God allows? Saan yung linya na sasabihin natin, God allows hanggang dito lang ha, pero dito hindi na? So mahirap yun kasi Romans 2.11, there is no partiality with God. Anong sin yung allowed kay God? Ano yung sin yung hindi allowed kay God? And last I checked, there's no sin that God allows. There's no, God is not a God of evil. So guys, don't get me wrong, hindi ko binabawasan yung power ni God. Actually, mas magaling siya na yung hindi siya insecure. Na pati yung kapalpakan natin, kaya niyang ayusin. Basta bigay mo buhay mo sa kanya. Amen. Amen. So I hope that answers question. Um, let, let me check. Another thing. Uh, yung kay Jonah, pinarusahan ba siya ni God? Kasi di siya sumunod. Gusto raw, okay. Uh, Jonah is part of the Old Covenant. Okay? Jonah is part of the Old Covenant. And Jonah also had free will. Okay? So the Lord, again, different dispensation, different uh, uh, means of dealing with people. Yung kay Jonah, gumawa na ng paraan si God. Gumamit siya ng giant fish. Pero you know what? Si Jonah, pwede naman tumakbo ulit. Pwede pa rin siyang tumakbo a second time. He could run. He could sit in some jungle somewhere and not obey. And at the end of the day, my supernatural circumstance, yun yung, sina- yun yung sign na supernatural na pag hindi ka pa nakinig kay God dun, hindi ko na alam. Pero at the end of the day, Si Jonah naman yung nag-preach sa Nineveh. Hindi naman si God mismo nag-preach. God has to work through people. He uses us. He doesn't he 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 chose to use people. Kaya nga privilege. Eh. 'Di ba? God chose to, to work through Jonah. Ang problema doon, sa tigas nga ng ulo niya, hindi hindi punishment 'yun. It's a way of calling him back. It's a way of calling him back. But at the end of the day, si Jonah para niyo sumunod according to his free will. Okay. Next. Um, wait lang. Okay. From Gilbert. It says, why is it that many people have different interpretation of the Bible and they keep arguing about it? Well, you know, that's a good question. And that's, that's um, th- there is a constant seeking of truth. And, you know, no one person possesses the total perfection of truth. Pag mayroon nagsabi sa'yo na alam nila lahat, umalis ka dun, tumakbo ka dahil kalokohan yun. Walang may monopoly on truth, walang may, may monopoly on all that. Um, but here's the thing, hindi pwedeng salungat yung truth. You know, whether, you know, parang, parang election lang yan. Eh. We can all have our opinions on sino dapat yung kandidato, sino dapat yung boboto natin, pero isa lang yung panalo. You know, wala kang magagawa kung yun yung panalo, yun yung panalo. And that's the word of God. At the end of the day, John 14, 26 says that the Holy Spirit is our teacher. Diba? And He is the one who will reveal all truth. So there can only be one truth. There can only be one truth. We can have 50 different interpretations on one verse. Pero ano sabi ni Jesus? You will tell a tree by its fruit. Kung walang fruit yung sinasabing word of God, walang fruit yung interpretation na yun, so, di, sino may problema? Diba? First uh, Corinthians 4 verse 20 says that the kingdom of God does not consist in words but in power. So, madalas kong ituro to 
madalas kong ituro to na um, yung word of God tsaka yung power, hindi mo pwedeng paghiwalayin. Okay? Pag, pag hiniwalay mo yung word of God tsaka yung power, parang sinasabi mo na gusto mo ng tubig na hindi basa. So pwede kang magka-ice na hindi basa, meron kang, meron kang water vapor na medyo basa, pero yung tubig tsaka yung basa, you cannot ever separate that. That is the same as the kingdom of God does not consist in words but in power. The word of God and the power of God have to work together. So yung akin lang, uh, how do I tell which interpretation is ganito, which interpretation is ganito? You know what? It bears fruit. Kung yung interpretation yan, walang kwenta, walang nangyayari sa tao, hindi nagbabago, hindi siya lumapit kay Jesus, hindi niya ano, hindi anong point? Hindi yun eh. Kasi uh, John 6 verse 63, Jesus said, my words, they are spirit and they are life. So, um, where if it's not breathing life, if it leads to condemnation, if it if it uh, if it is not if it is not according to God's heart, then I don't think it's a proper interpretation. There can only be one truth. So I'm not saying na perfect yung alam ko. I'm still learning. Everyone's learning. Pero ako alam ko. I see fruit. I see fruit. You know. Um, People comment on my teaching on healing na dapat ganito, dapat ganyan. Bakit? Ilan, ilan tao na ba nakita mong gumaling na may cancer? Through the word of God. I don't have power. I'm not a doctor. I don't have anything na pwede ko ipagmalaki. But I've seen the word of God work. So why will I subject myself to someone's interpretation kung sa kanya walang fruit? Sa akin meron. Bakit sa amin nakakita kami ng mga drug addict na nagbabago na wala namang rehab? Walang gamot, walang steps, walang ganito. Word of God. Renew ng mind. Paano nangyari yun? Um, I don't know. Di ba? So, yung akin lang is that I don't claim to have every perfect interpretation or explanation but all I know is that I see Jesus manifest. And I see His love flowing. So, I'm, um, I'm pretty confident in the truth that I stand. So, okay. Next question. Okay. Next question is... From, wow, hindi ko alam yung name na to. Napakahaba. Wala na bang consequences para sa mga anak niya? Napatawad na tayo. Okay. Um, okay, very good. Very good question. Wala bang consequences para sa mga anak niya? Okay. Kasi dahil napatawad na tayo. So, sin, when you sin, uh, you have you have to understand first yung spirit, soul, and body bago mo ma-inihinto. When you sin, it's not that God is your problem. As far as God is concerned, you your sins have been forgiven through Jesus Christ. So, pag nag-sin ka, hindi sa babatuhan ka ng kidlat ni God o hahagisan ka ng cancer para turuan ka ng leksyon. That's not how it works. When you sin, uh, your sins have been paid for by the blood of Jesus. When you sin, as far as God is concerned, nakikita niya pa rin sa'yo si Jesus, nabura na ni Jesus lahat ng kasalanan mo. Nabayaran niya na. Sapat na yung blood ni Jesus para at talagang burahin lahat ng ginawa mong kasalanan. You have been justified just as if you have never ever sinned. You are white as snow. You are a new creation. You are born again. In the Spirit, you are you have been perfected by the Holy Spirit. So pag tingin niyo sa'yo, anak ka. Malinis ka pa rin. Pero yung soul and yung body mo, pag nag ka, you open yourself to the consequences. So hindi si God ang problema mo pag nag ka. Ang problema mo is, number one, consequence mo. Number two, binubuksan mo ng pintuan si Satan na pumasok sa buhay mo. So, when you sin, it's not that it's not God who is your problem. It's you are still loved, you are still forgiven, you are still uh, precious in the sight of God, you are still His child, hindi nagbago yun. Pero, pero, haharapin mo yung consequences ng sin dito sa mundo. So, when you sin, it's not the problem, your God is not your problem. Sin, the problem is your consequences and you open a door for Satan to enter your life. That's the problem of sin. So, you know consequences. Okay, next. Okay. Um, question. Okay. Question from a friend. You pray to God about something. Ang sagot is yes, no, or wait. Um, You know what? To be honest, yung yes, no, or wait, I I don't exactly agree with that. Kasi sa Romans 12, 2, nakasulat doon, I, I used to teach that message also. Hindi ko na tinuturo yun. Kasi naintindihan ko na kung ano yung heart ni God. Okay? Uh, yung yes, no, or wait, parang mali yun dahil dapat alam mo yung will ni God. You know? 
alam mo na dapat kung ano yung yes or no. You know what I mean? So, um, and, and that shows another transactional God. So, Romans 12.2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so you may prove what the will of God is that is good and acceptable and perfect. So, so that you would prove, that you would know na mapapatunayan mo ano yung will ni God. And God's will is good and acceptable and perfect. You're supposed to know the will of God. Hindi yung hingin ko kaya to. Ano kaya sasabihin ni God? Actually, pag ganun yung tingin mo, ibig sabihin na di mo siya kilala. That you have not spent enough time in the word of God to know his heart. Because uh, you're supposed to know what the will of God is. You're supposed to know that even before, kasi okay, Matthew 6 verse 8, it says, even before you ask, your Father in heaven already knows what you need. Okay? So, bago pa tayo makailangan, alam niya na. Ang tanong dun is, alam mo ba kung ano yung meron mo kay Christ? Di ba? So, um, you know, you're, you're supposed to know the will of God. If you're asking Him, Lord, will mo ba to? Will mo ba? It shows that you have not renewed your mind in the scripture. When I pray, When I pray, the reason why I see my prayers manifest and I see God's blessings flow in my life is because I pray according to the will of God. Hindi ko na kailangan mag-isip, yes ba to or no? O mamaya na? O next time na lang? Bubugbugin muna ako bago ako matuto? Hindi, hindi yun eh. Yung point ko is confident ako na Lord, heart mo to. This is your heart. This is your, this is, this is, you already said yes. You already did this through Jesus Christ. So I'm going to confidently stand in faith. The moment na itatanong mo yes or no or wait, ibig sabihin nun, hindi faith yun, unbelief yun. Kasi hindi ka na confident na may sagot si God. Kasi hindi ka sure. So, yeah, that's... Um, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, Brother Ron, uh, if a believer commit a sin... Uh, break by yung fellowship with the Holy Spirit. No, no, the, the Holy Spirit is with you forever. Okay? So um, when you when you commit sin, he, he doesn't leave you. He says, I will never leave you nor, nor forsake you. John 16, Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will be with you forever. So hindi dahil nabibreak o nawawala o umaalis, hindi sinungaling si God. Ang problema dun is lumalakas yung flesh natin So yung spirit natin, hindi natin na, okay, uh, ba yun? Romans Romans 8:6 ba yun? na ano um, to be to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So pag carnal mind ka, yung sensitivity mo kay Holy Spirit bumababa kasi lumalakas si flesh. So hindi nawawala yung fellowship, pero yung sensitivity mo sa kanya dahil hina-harden mo yung heart mo sa sin, yun ang naiging uh, problema. All right. Thank so, you. Thank you. Next, um, next. Uh, okay. Can you explain? I was experiencing that when I'm reading a Bible, nagkadaot ako and nagkakontradik sa isip ko, desire ng puso ko, and bis naganahan ako magbasa, naguguluhan ako, gusto ko magbasa ng Bible tulad ng dati, nanamdam ko ba ako sa natural ba nangyari to? Well, you know, That's the enemy at work. So ang importante dyan is regardless of how you feel, we continue with the Word of God. You're, uh, wag natin i-base sa feelings, wag natin i-base sa ano. By faith, we stand in the Word of God. Na Lord, kahit na may doubt ako, hindi ko feel, nawawalan ako ng gana, babalik pa rin ako sa salita mo. Regardless of how I feel, what I'm going through, may problema ako sa buhay, masarap ang buhay, o mayaman ako, o wala akong pera, kahit na anong ano mo, Renew your mind in the Word. Pag may bumubulong na ganyan, set it aside. Tanggalin mo yan. Bulong ng kalaban yan. Ako focus ako dito sa Word kasi the Word is the source of life. Okay. Next uh, questions. Okay. okay. Um, Galatians 3.13 How can God in this statement be cursed? No, no. Ang sinasabi niya, ang sinasabi dyan, na lahat ng curse na dapat deserve ng tao dahil sa sin ni Adam. Kasi, uh, ano yun eh, uh, Romans 5.12 yun eh, because of one man's sin, death entered the world. Yun yung curse eh. The curse of death entered the world because of Adam's sin. Dahil sa palpak ni Adam, lahat ng kamatayan, kasamaan, yung demonyo, naging God of this world, yung 
yung power niya na ano sa buong mundo because of that dahil sa sin ng ano ni Adam may curse ang tao si Jesus kinuha yun he became the curse for us para ikaw at ako hindi na tayo cursed wala ka ng curse sinalo ni Jesus yung penalty ng sin natin kinuha niya so now if you would read Deuteronomy 28 Deuteronomy 28 talks about blessing and cursing the first 15 verses will talk about these are the blessings if you obey and the rest of it hanggang verse 65 yata or 68 something like that is the curses Ang ginawa ni Jesus, kinuha niya lahat yun. Sa kasalanan mo, kasalanan ko, kasalanan ni Adam, kinuha niya, akin na lang yung curse, para anak, sa'yo na yung blessing. He became, kinuha niya, inabsorb niya, para hindi mo na daan, hindi mo na bayaran, kasi hindi natin kaya bayaran. So dahil dun, may access na tayo sa blessing ni God. Basahin mo yung kasunod nun. No, because of that, di ba, we are now heirs sa promise ni Abraham tsaka sa lahat ng ano. So yung curse, kinuha niya. Yun yung ibig sabihin doon. So it's not that he took the curse, kasalanan natin, palpak natin, siya nag-ayos. Amen. Um, sorry, I'm trying to answer kasi my battery is dying out. But um, may question pa dito. Unforgivable sin, ano po yung verse na yun? Pwede niyo ba explain? So it talks about the, the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Matthew 12. I have a teaching on this. But the the quick answer the quick answer would be guys we have to reconcile this with the with the rest of the Bible. Hindi kasi pwedeng kunin lang natin isang verse, isang segment tapos interpret na natin na ah, ganito ganyan. Uh, we have to reconcile what is the sin that sends people to hell? There is only one sin that sends people to hell and that is to reject Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Okay? The only sin because Jesus paid for the sins of the world. But he who, do, who does not believe in the Son, wala kang salvation. Diba? God so loved the world, he, whosoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. So, um, so if you don't believe in Jesus, alam mo kung saan pupunta. The only sin that sends people to hell is the rejection of Jesus as their Lord and Savior. The blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is to reject the Holy Spirit. Kasi si Holy Spirit yung seal natin na we are going to heaven. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of adoption. Na anak na tayo ni Lord. The Holy Spirit is what makes us born again. The Holy Spirit is what gives life to us. The Holy Spirit is who makes us born again in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who gives us power. So yung new identity natin in Christ, the holy, righteous, blameless, dahil kay Holy Spirit. Pag i-reject mo si Holy Spirit, hindi ka punta heaven. Wala kang forgiveness. Punta kang imperno. So, Yun ang uh, short answer. Okay, so I can talk about that more, but we're running out of time. I want to answer the other here. One last question na lang so we can... Okay. 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 So, before na... Okay. No, no, no. no. Um, yung blasphemy ng Holy Spirit, by the way, linawin ko, is not... May nasabi ka dati. It's not an action. It is a heart decision. If you decide in your heart na ayaw ko kay Jesus, okay. yun ang blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Hindi yung namura mo si God dati o sa galit mo may sinabi ka. That, that's not the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Just to understand uh, God's grace. That's a short answer. Okay? So, um, next. From Princess in Delbert. Is our God a universal God, meaning God of all men regardless of beliefs and religion? If so, Buddhist, Hindu, are they protected and loved by Jesus Christ? God loves all people. God so loved the world. John 3.16. But they have to believe in Jesus. So, in Hindi ka pwedeng Buddhist ako, pero ganito kanya. So, uh, Titus 2.11 says, The grace of God has appeared to, to all men, you know, uh, bringing salvation to all men. The grace of God has appeared to all, bringing salvation for all men. Ang problema dyan, is everyone saved? No. Because you have to believe in Jesus. So, kahit ano pang religion mo, kahit ano pang background mo, kahit atheist ka pa, o or Scientologist ka pa, or whatever religion mo, hanggat di ka naniniwala kay Jesus, hindi ka born again. If you don't truly receive Jesus in your heart as your Lord and Savior, and you receive Him, it's not about religion kasi, or membership, or what. Eh. It's everyone in this world has an opportunity to come to Jesus right now. Um, the problem is, not everyone receives. So, salvation, God is, I don't believe in universalism, that's a lie. Um, you need Jesus, period. It's very simple. 
kahit ano pang background mo, pero you come to Jesus, you're born again. But I don't believe that, uh, sige, tanggapin ko si Jesus, pero balik akong pag uh, ganito. Uh, question ko kung genuine ba talaga yung acceptance mo. Uh, submission, okay. So, next. Um, okay, okay. Uh, moving forward. As a Christian, kapag nagkakasala, isa ay dahil lang kasi tao lang, uh, dapat lang ikatwiran yun. Um, if you read, pan, okay, if you read Romans 7, yun yung pinag-uusapan yung old creation. Okay? Na yan yung katwiran nila, na tao lang, nag, nagkakasala. Dapat kasi may, may new nature na tayo. So hindi na dapat nature mo yung sin. So now, uh, all of us, we, we, we commit sin. We make mistakes. Kasi nga, may flesh pa tayo. Yeah, please check out my teaching on spirit, soul, and body para maintindihan mo yung nangyayari doon. Kasi yung spirit mo born again, pero yung soul and body mo, hindi. Yung soul and body mo are still fallen. Nagkakasakit tayo, nalulungkot tayo. Pag nadapa ka, sugatan ka. We are still, you know, in that process. So, um, yung spirit mo, hindi na sinner. Spirit mo, born again. Kailangan sumunod si soul and si body mo kay spirit. ba? So, your new nature is divine nature kay Holy Spirit. Hindi na dapat ikaw yung kusang nagsisin. Yung flesh mo lang. Pag nagsisin ka, yung nagsisin ka, ibig sabihin nyo, mas dominante yung flesh mo kaysa kay spirit. So, yeah. Uh, let me just, uh, I'll go through this. Yung mga teachings, if you have questions, you can ask Ate Osman. She can send you the link. Nasa um, Metanoia website naman yun tsaka sa, ano, sa YouTube. Okay? Uh, please, uh, please explain further the Holy Spirit's conviction. Okay. Okay. Um, wait lang. Okay. Holy Spirit's conviction. The conviction of the Holy Spirit, uh, if you read that carefully, um, it's for the world, meaning for unbelievers. It will con- The Holy Spirit will convict the world of its sin. And the sin is that they don't believe in me. Sabi ni Jesus yun. So, yung conviction is for the world, meaning non-believer. You know, so when the non-believer hears the... Mali, okay, mali yung application. Ang turo kasi ng church, pag may... Oh no, my phone's dying. So, guys, teka. Um, wait lang. I'm gonna try to... I'm gonna try to... Ano this? Teka. Kung maputol man, babalik na lang ako, kuya. <laughs> yes, yeah. Andito naman si Brother Nick. Brother Nick, maybe yeah, uh, can... Or Brother Eric is there, I think. You guys Brother remember. Eric, yeah. Okay, unmute din si Brother Eric. Uh, and brother Nick as well. Okay, pa. Thank you. Brother Eric or brother Nick, you could, you could probably continue. Unmute, please. Brother Nick and brother Eric. Yeah, okay. There you go, Nick. If I can do this is I have like kids around. Hold on. Yeah. Let me, let me see. I'll shift to a different uh, room. I'm not as eloquent as... Wait. Okay. There you go. Wrong room. Hold on. Let me co-workers. Wait. Where did he stop? Romans 8.6. So, so that was answered already. Yung tao lang. Uh, we are a new creation. Holy Spirit's condition. Tapos na yan, no? Yes, yes. Sorry. I wasn't monitoring the, the question. Karamihan po ng mga co-workers, sabi sila, masheran, word of God. Kasi binabaran na nila ako na may Diyos. Sila, Buddhist sila. Paano ko po sila masheran ng word of God? I think we have to we have to bank on on the seeds that we plant on people. Uh, just to give you, I guess, an encouragement will be. I grew up in a pagan family. Uh, I don't exactly label it pagan. Well, we basically never converse about our faith. Uh, being, ako na papansin niyo, fail sa Our business, our 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 dinner discussions were were about work, were about 
uh, school growing up. Uh, my dad was was agnostic. My mom still a pagan. You know, uh, lahat ng pwede niyang paniwalaan, pinapaniwalaan niya. But that never really discouraged me from planting seeds. I'm the first generation believer in my in my clan, in my family. And again, by God's grace, you know, I I I modeled that. I modeled Christ likeness. And in the end, it's not much how how much we know, but how we carry ourselves. You know, that they will see uh the fruit. And my dad, I guess, I, I kind of won him over, believe it or not. I guess parang naging signs and wonders in the end that I was able to share to him testimony that it's no longer the kingdom of God is not just in word but in power. So, dyan ko siya na, na, na panalunan. Uh, wala na, patapos na to. Buti na lang, patapos na. Bago na sinasin. <laughs> Pastor Ron just asked custody or obligation to my husband to be born again since my husband told me ahead that he will never listen to me or believe. Okay. Uh, is it a sin for me to ignore him since it is his free will not to know God and having a deep relationship with God? Okay. Let's start there. How do we share the gospel? Um, and, and Ron has shared this several times. And I believe in this also, that it is not by, by fear of the, the Lord, but God's goodness leads us to repentance. Right? So it's really, yung belief natin, yung pananampalataya natin kay, kay God, it's by being transformed by the Holy Spirit that we witness uh, to, to people. Hey. <laughs> like I said, I have a lot of kids around. Uh, um, so there, it's a, it's a All right. challenge. All right, sorry. Um, so, yeah, uh, free will not to know. Yes, unfortunately, everyone does have free will. Uh, we do have free will to reject God, the Holy Spirit. Any of his signs and wonders, kaya rin natin i-reject. Kaya sabihin ng tao, tsamba lang yan, you know. Uh, Ruth is anger, fighting. I, I, I kind of doubt that anyone that models Christ would end up fighting. You know, if you're the, the, the wife, we're called to be submissive and win our unbelieving spouses, right? Uh, next question. I think Brother Ron is also there now. I'm back. Okay. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> medyo na bura yung mga question. Sorry, hindi ko na-anticipate yung low bat na ano. But um, praise God, I was able to come back. What, what question are you tackling now? Nabura lahat dito eh. Angel. Angel? Sorry. Anong question yung sunod natin? Hindi ko kasi makita. Sorry. Um, ah, okay. Yeah, si Brother Nick earlier was talking about um, yung question na is it uh, my custody or obligation to my husband to be born again since my husband told me ahead that he will never listen to me or believe whatever I say about the gospel. It is, is it a sin for me to ignore him since it is his free will not to know God or have a deep relationship with God because it well, would be the root of anger and fighting if every time I insisted to invite him. What if something will happen to him yet he doesn't know God? Is it my husband's choice then? Okay. I see. So I, I, I heard a little bit about Brother Nick's answer. And you know, there is scripture that says that the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the believing wife. That the unbelieving wife will be sanctified by the believing husband. So, ang akin is that uh, wag mo masadong isipin na dapat ba ganito, dapat ganyan. Ang focus mo lang si Jesus. Period. Just focus on Christ. And the more that you focus on Him, the more you develop a love for His Word, the more you become more intimate with the Holy Spirit, you will begin to manifest the love and goodness of God. And like what Brother Nick quoted kanina from Romans 2 verse 4, is that it is the goodness of God that leads to repentance. Mm -hmm. That the moment they see that he sees Christ in you, the moment he sees how, um, how uh, ito, ito, yung, ito yung problem eh. Uh, kadalasan, pa, yung, uh, you know, I was like that too. My, my wife prayed for me seven years before I came to know Jesus Christ. I was a horrible person, you know, before. And, uh, and um, just, just don't stop trusting God. Don't stop seeking God. Don't stop speaking life over him. Speak life over him. You know, bless him. Kahit natulog siya, lay hands mo. Pag-pray mo siya. 
declare mo Lord, he belongs to you. Lord, para sa iyo buhay niya. Lord, alam ko may kilala mo rin. May kilala ka rin niya. Declare a Damascus experience na makikita niya yung light of Christ na matatanggal yun ng bubulag sa kanya. Just continue to believe. You know, so um don't focus too much na ito ba yung tama, ito yung mali. Focus mo lang si Jesus. Uh, everything uh, Matthew 6:33 Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. So, yeah. Um, next question I saw here was follow up question. I don't know kung meron pang kasunod yun na uh, sundot nyo na lang ako. Pero okay, follow up question from uh, from Victoria It said, if convictions for unbelievers, do they have the Holy Spirit na puma? No, they no they do not. Because you have you receive the Holy Spirit. When you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's the moment you are born again. Yung point lang dito is, ito yung, ito yung tinatawag ka. So ang question is, sasagot ka ba? Kasi pwede ka naman i-convict ni Holy Spirit of your sin that you need a Savior, pero hindi mo pansinin. So you can still reject that. You know, you can still reject that. Um, you know, so that's why not everyone is saved because not everyone receives Jesus. Na-convict na sila, ang pinili pa nila lalo, i-harden yung heart nila. You can see that in Romans 1, parang verse 20 plus yata or something na, na these people, they did not you know, honor God. That they chose not to honor God. And and um, they hardened their hearts. And dahil doon, the Lord gave them over to a depraved mind. Kasi ayaw eh. Tinatawag ka na ni God. You know, convict ka na ng sin na kailangan mo ng Savior. Ayaw mo pa rin. So, ano magagawa natin? God will not violate our free will. He gave us free will because the the value of our relationship with him is in the fact that we have free will. You know, parang kung may asawa kayo, um, yung value ng relationship nyo sa marriage is pinili nyo yung isa't isa. Diba? Ang pangit naman nun kung, oh, so bakit kayong mag-asawa? Paano kayo nag-asawa? Wala, kailangan eh. Diba? <laughs> Napilitan lang ako eh. Kailangan nag baka mamaya suntukin <laughs> ng, di ba, pag yun yung sinagot mo sa, sa misis mo, na, ba, oh, paano kayo nagkakilala? Paano kayo nagkasal? Wala eh. Kailangan, nandyan eh. Di ba? So, ang, ang pangit naman, di ba? But, uh, anyway, uh, kidding aside, ang point ko lang, the value of the relationship is when you freely choose to love one another. Ganon din kay God. The value of your relationship with God is when you choose to know Him and give Him your life that He gave. So, um, yung conviction doesn't automatically mean saved ka. Madami na convict na hindi, you know, hindi sumasang ayon at hindi nagsusurrender. Um, okay. All right. So, I don't see any more other questions. Okay. Kuya Edgar, Ate Osman, baka kayo, meron pa. Before... Uh, I just want to thank you, Brother Ron, for uh, speaking again rest of the day, for uh, speaking the word of God. Angel, you know, I just there. Kung may mga ibang questions na ano na, you know, I know it's getting late and stuff, and I know you guys are doing stuff. Medyo kumaba tong ano natin. But you guys, questions, questions. Go, go, message us. Message the Metanoia page if you have questions. Message Ate Osman. We can direct you to whatever teaching videos. Yung mga natanong kanina, um, you know, kasi ang hirap magbigay ng short answer dahil You have to see the Bible kasi as its entirety. Hindi pwedeng tagpi-tagpi lang tayo. Gusto ko to, gusto ko yan, gusto ko to. The Bible is one whole book and one whole truth na kailangan natin makita from start to finish. So if you don't see the whole picture, delikado kasi nagkakaroon ng bias yung mga doctrines. So, um, you know, we do have a lot of teaching videos. We have a lot of those difficult questions na hindi pinag-uusapan sa simbahan, pinag-uusapan namin. Kasi gusto ko maintindihan din. Gusto, you know, nung, nung, when I learned from my mentors, yung mga hard questions, gusto ko maintindihan. Tapos pwede pala natin maintindihan kasi kaya nga nandiyan si Holy Spirit kasi He is our teacher. ba? Diba? So we we have like teachings on Job, thorn in the flesh, yung mga God this allows, sovereignty, ganyan. Alam ko sobrang hirap pag-usapan yan. But we have answers. In my heart, in in my mind right now, there is no contradiction in the Bible. There is no contradiction with God. There is no, hindi ko alam, bahala na si God. I'm not saying I know everything, pero sinasabi ko, kilala ko si God. He Amen. is so good. Amen. He is so loving. Praise And I, ang, ang gusto lang namin sa ministry is 
makilala nyo rin siya na kung paano namin nakilala. Kasi buhay na buhay siya sa mga buhay na. So, yun lang, you know. Thank you. Praise uh, God. Kuya Edgar. Can I, yeah. can I encourage uh, the, the ones who are trying to witness to their either co-workers or family? Okay, go, go, okay. go. go. Okay. Uh, really short one lang. Why go. are you guys here? You guys are here not because some couple shoved scripture to your face. You're not here because someone scared you alam ba ninyo kung saan kayo pupunta pag namatay kayo. You're here because you actually view this couple nakikita ninyo yung pagmamahal nila sa inyo. Tama ba? This is why you, you guys still continue to, to, to attend. Amen. And that's how you really witness to people. And then once you draw closer to them already, that is when we actually share the, the word of the Lord. That's how I won a lot of people also. Not by saying, do you know where you will go when you die? You know? <laughs> not effective as well. But don't get me wrong. Right? Iba pa rin yung nakikita ninyo yung pagmamahal ng tao sa, sa inyo. The legitimacy of Christ in their life. So, that's all I have to say. Amen. Praise God, brother. Para singit ko lang, ha? brother Nick. Singit ko lang. Ganda ng point mo. You know, super. You know, um, like si, si, si Kuya Edgar, si Ate Osmen, ang, ang nakikita nyo sa kanila, the reason why you are drawn to them is you see the love of God in their lives. Amen. Kung hindi nila reflect yung image ni Christ, hindi mo naman sila papakinggan, hindi naman kayo papa-under. Eh. Diba? Amen. Bakit ako magpapa-under sa isang tao na does not walk the talk? Diba? So, uh, ako, I, I honor you, Kuya Edgar and Ate Osmen, as, as, as uh, servants of the Lord and as, as mm-hmm. brothers and sisters, in Christ, and I am blessed to be part of this journey with you. And uh, rest assured that our, our ministry is here to support. And Amen. we serve the same kingdom. We are on the same mission. We are moving forward by God's grace. And you know, uh, everyone in this group, I pray and I truly believe that every one of you will be used by God in amazing, amazing ways. You know, I think I missed a question kanina, pero para kay Sister Lisa yatayo na sa Japan. You know, we do have a metanoia in Japan. And if you want us to you know, get you connected to that group, we can introduce you to them. Praise and God. And hook you up. And you guys can talk and uh, sharpen one another. Nasa Kasakabe area yata sila. You know, but the it's a small group, but they're doing amazing things for God's kingdom Great. over there. So we can all get in touch. So, um, Edgar, uh, if, if we're done, uh, can I pray for everyone before we... Yes, please, go? please. Yeah, okay. All right. All right, Sister Lisa, contact tayo ah, para ano, I'll get you in touch with Brother Secho who's uh, leading Metanoia Japan and our our brothers and sisters over there. All right, let's pray. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for this time. Thank you for this opportunity to have fellowship in your name. Thank you for uh, the life of every single person in this group and everyone watching, uh, yes. wherever you're watching from. You know, Father, you are a good God. You are an amazingly, amazingly good God. And Father, we... You know, we're sorry for those times that we doubted your goodness. We're sorry for those times that we doubted and had unbelief that you were able to do what you said. Father, you know, we're sorry for those times. We, we repented those times that, that we, we believed in you yet had unbelief in the things that you could do. Yeah. Father, tonight we, we lift our hearts up to you. And we commit, Lord, to really seek your word. The Lord, gusto ka namin makilala. And we, we, we bear our hearts before you. Lord, wala naman kaming matatago sa inyo. There's nothing we can hide from you. We surrender our hearts to you right now. With a desire just to know you, Father. To spend time with you. To understand you. You gave us the mind of Christ, 1 Corinthians 2.16. We want to use it to understand you, to know you, Father, more intimately. We want to invest in our relationship with you. Because, Lord, how, how can we trust you if we don't know you? How can we have faith in you if we don't trust you? Yes. So, Father, we leave we leave all that unbelief behind. In the name of Jesus, Father, our hearts belong to you and you alone. Father, we commit to renew our minds in your word. We commit, Father, to have godly fellowship and sharpen one another and truly seek the truth of your word. Thank that even you. before we swallow any doctrines or swallow any teachings or, or believe whatever, Lord, we will be prudent and check your word for ourselves. Thanks. Yes, Lord. Lord, your words, they are spirit and they are life. And we receive them fully. Right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I speak life upon everyone watching this. Yes. I speak peace 
and love and grace upon each of their lives right now. Father, kung ano man yung pinagdadaanan nila, ano man yung iniiyak nila sa gabi, I just speak peace over them. Thank the you. peace that comes from you, for you are the God of peace, that mm-hmm. I ask you, Lord, through your Holy Spirit to just just blanket them in your love and comfort. Your Holy Spirit, Lord, is the comforter. So I, Father, may you strengthen, continue to strengthen my brothers and sisters as they go through their own battles. We know, Lord, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Father, if anyone is sick here right now, I come against that sickness in the name of Jesus. That the spirit realm knows no physical boundaries, even though we may be physically far apart. Father, in the spirit, we are united. So right now, through the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, I speak health and healing upon you. Brother and sister, whatever is wrong in your body, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. We declare, 1 Peter 2, verse 24, that by the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. That because Jesus paid for it, we can receive and believe healing, physical healing, real physical healing. Lord, just as you did in the Gospels and continue to do today, we speak health and healing here in the name of Jesus. Lahat ng abnormality sa dugo, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Any diabetes, any cancer, we rebuke goiter. We command to just get out in the name of Jesus. Any infirmity, we cancel and cut and reject in the name of Jesus. So I speak life upon my brothers and sisters. We cancel depression in this place in Jesus' name. We reject anxiety in the name of Jesus. That is not not welcome here because my God is a good God. Our God is a God of peace and love, and he gives us a sound mind. So I speak wholeness upon here, upon my brothers and sisters in the name of Jesus. Father, we leave brokenness at the foot of the cross we receive sozo we receive wholeness i declare that that through jesus christ we are made whole father that colossians 2 10 says we are complete in him we are no longer broken we are made whole so father we thank you for this time i speak life and peace and blessing upon everyone watching this we lift them all up to you we love you lord and we praise you in jesus name Amen. 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 Thank you. Lahat. Can we take a picture, Brother Ron, before you go? Oh, sure. Thank you. 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 Thank you, Ana. Alis na kami. Good night. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Father Ron. Thank you, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sige po, Ate Osman. Yes. Yung metanoy ay kijapan po, Ate Osman. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Brother Secho. <laughs> Pull up the whole. Pull up the whole. Salamat po, Brother. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. God bless. God bless. Thank you po, Ate Osman, Sir Edgar. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. God bless you all. God bless. God bless you all. Ate Osman, thank you. I love you both. God bless, God bless. Thank you sa lahat. Thank you everyone. Yes, you are my mother and father in the ministry. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.